Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's nine o'clock according to my watch, and we do have 16 people online, so that's great. Um, I think we should start just the legal notices. This is being recorded. A uh, summary report will be produced next week. And if you are asking for the floor, please raise your name plate. Or if you're online, please just um, raise your hand in the Zoom. And when the chair or co-chair calls your name, uh, please just restate your name, stakeholder group, and then slowly, and then you can go into your intervention. Um, apart from that, I think that's fine. And I'll hand it over to our chair, Carol Roach. And it would also be great if you could move up a little bit as well, so we don't have this empty island. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good morning. So I'll start off by saying you know, when you, sometimes when you go into a church, everybody's at the back. So we're not in church. So if you could just move up, let's get comfy and cozy. No, nobody's moving today. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I tried. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, all. Thank you for joining us in person and online. Hope everybody had a good rest. And a very warm welcome to the first day of the MAG meeting. Uh, yesterday we had a very we had fruitful conversations at the open consultations day, both with the leadership pa uh, panel members as and with various IGF stakeholders. The leadership panel recommended the IGF be inclusive, ensuring the equal participation of all stakeholders, stakeholder groups, but also persons with disabilities. They also mentioned the need to have more actionable outcomes resulting from a more focused agenda, which puts an emphasis on the success of IGF. A solid communication strategy will help to achieve this purpose. With the various major global initiatives taking place in 2024, it will be out, out it sorry, it will be of utmost importance to make the IGF stand out as a unique platform discussing internet related issues. Stakeholders took the opportunity to emphasize the importance of storytelling, which could positively impact fundraising initiatives to strengthen the IGF. Also, I would like to thank again the host country for their insightful presentation on current IGF 2024 preparations and the dedication of their whole team to ensuring smooth proceedings. The stock taking from the IGF 2023 will for sure help enhance the preparatory process, including the program structure, the inclusion of the IGF stakeholders and any other logistics and technical matters. For your information, the updates and details provided from related internet governance, internet initiatives, and processes will be duly shared in the meeting notes. Today, we will recap the inputs from the open consultations 
As an objective, I would like to find consensus on the IGF 2024 overarching theme. In the afternoon, we will shape this year's IGF 2024 annual program, agreeing on the event format, the type and number of sessions, and the various IGF program tracks. I would like to take this opportunity to inform you about the extended deadline for the CSTD questionnaire to March 31st. The MAG Working Group on Strategy will present it to you, to, to you their response tomorrow. Please stay active, both online and in the room. Thank you very much. Oops. Okay. So we go into discussion. Yes, we have discussion. But we discussed yesterday. Okay. So um, the floor is now open for discussions based on anything that you heard yesterday. Um, don't be shy. <clears throat> Sorry. I think you would have received in your email the um, IGF 2024 themes and sub-themes sub that um, the Secretariat was making note of. Nobody had their coffee or tea this morning? Okay, Manny. Good morning, um, my name is Siadu, the MAG member from private sector. Um, I just wanted to note, based on the results that we saw yesterday on the thematic inputs, and as we will be discussing the themes for this year's IGF, I think that it's very important that when we um, divide the themes that we want to address, let's just make sure that we don't just pick out themes that um, had a high percentage um, from the consultation, but rather make sure that they're weighed out in a way that they represent what um, each sector um, has stated, as well as at each region, because we want to end up with a balanced agenda, not by, by numbers in a sense of this issue was uh, by percentage high um, across everyone, because this is sometimes not always balanced. So yeah, just, just starting with, with this idea um, to guide us through our discussions today. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Manny. That's a very good point. And also something that we actually usually do in the past is we give the region that it's in more weight for those issues because we're going to get more people from that region. And then next year, of course, it's the other region. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, thank you very much. Uh... Just thoughts come yesterday from discussions yesterday about um, how we might ensure a better quality uh, for for our program and how, uh, yani how what the thing that we might think differently this year to ensure that we have a very high quality tracks on 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 place. So I was thinking of um, and this is an idea that uh, we might have like something like the the track producer, where is somebody has an ownership in the mag on, or a group of people have an ownership on the quality of each track. So after we select um, the proposals, they need to go and read this proposal, making sure if there's any gaps, if there's any um, missed area, and they might ask for it. So I was thinking on, on the line of how we can improve the quality itself uh, of of uh, of the offering of IGF in terms of proposals, tracks, and have accountability around that. Thank you. Anyone? Bruna. 
Okay, go ahead, Bruna. Bruna, Thanks. you have the floor. Yeah. Hi, Carol. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Um, now just reacting to Abdulrahman's ideas on the the, the track leader. Sorry, from I'm speaking from a car. Um, but um, I wouldn't. I don't necessarily know how that ha how that would happen, but. Perhaps just an immediate reaction to that would be to have some sort of a rapporteur from the tracks instead of like someone that's actually leading the track. Because if we're going towards like someone having the ownership, that means we might need to promote some improvements to that. And what do these improvements mean? Do, does it mean we're going to bring in workshops that didn't went through the the process, they didn't went through the selection? So perhaps a, a kind of a reaction idea that we could provide is to have one rapporteur from each of the tracks coming into either the opening session or the closing ceremony, something like that, to either like set the scene on how the next days are going to be or do a summarizing, like a, a summary exercise um, at the end of the IGF. So just a reaction to this initial idea. Uh, thanks, Bruna. Um, I think it was um, with Lynn, we also, for for each track, we had a tip and tail. So in the first day, there was an overview of the track. And then on the last day, before the uh, taking stock, uh, after the taking stock session, there was a summary, a summarization of what happened in the track. And at that time, we also tried to um, select workshops in that track that actually flowed into each other. So it wasn't just, you know, um, a track on, let's say, cybersecurity, and it's just a bunch of cybersecurity workshops, but they were all related in some way. And we're looking at the different aspects of one topic. I mean, that was one way we have done it in the past, but um, of course the downside to that is that, um, You have to select the tracks, and sometimes you have um, great workshops, but they don't fit into that. And as you were saying as well, you sometimes had to look for a workshop that would fit into that, which may not have scored very highly in the um, evaluation by the MAG members, but it was just one thing that we had done. Alyssa? Thank you and uh, good morning, everyone. This is Elisa Heifer from the Dutch government, for the record. <clears throat> um, yeah, so yesterday we we also spoke quite a, a lot about a communication strategy um, and identifying stories. And I think it would be um, would be good to 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 pick up on that and um, um, to identify a few people who who want to feel responsible for um, for this communication strategy or. Um, Unless the the IGF secretariat is uh, is is going to take up on that task, because um, I think uh, the leadership panel identified it as an important issue um, yesterday. It, it was discussed amongst uh, ourselves as being an important issue. So I think it would be a pity if uh, if it wouldn't uh, if it wouldn't be picked up. And um, um, also in the the um, IGF twenty twenty three stock taking. Um, uh, presentation, it was mentioned to take the lead in organizing an IGF side event at the Summit of the Future. Um, I think that's a very interesting idea and something that is is definitely worthwhile exploring. It could be part of the communication strategy um, uh, or communication and reach out strategy, so to say. Um, but I think it's it, it, it would be good to know or to, to see if, if we can um, get the IGF to promote itself at Different UN um, um, events, uh, such as um, the Summit of the Future. Thank you. Very good point. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, so can I respond to that? Okay. Well, yeah. Um, uh, for that, yes. Um, I also offered. I think it was Winnie the journalists from to join us and I think it should be an open 
offer to form some sort of a working group. It doesn't have to be a MAG working group, just a working group for people who are interested and people who do have those skills. Um, and then we can see what we can do, the stories on the website. And um, I think Eleonora can lead that from the secretariat and coordinate that and set up a mailing list and have meetings to see what we can do, because those are very good ideas. And we saw yesterday, yeah, people do have ideas on what we can do. And it doesn't have to cost that much at all, right? Uh, I mean, you just have to have a camera and, you know, record and the idea itself. Um, so yes, we will do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Eleanor is noting that because she's gonna be leading that. <laughs> Well, well, just before the um, co-chair, can we prepare the sub-themes and themes for sharing, please? Okay. So Lisa and, and Secretary, I was thinking about uh, even the MAG meetings, sh shall we have it in New York? Or should we, is, is this something that it, is in, it might be associated with one of you and events? And 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 or we have another meeting for the mag on on the on the New York or on and any UN event that can help promote um, the presence of of, of 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 this one. Just just this is an idea just came through. We'll see now. But, uh... Please. <laughs> I'm not sure. You can answer that question. <laughs> Um, this is why I mean work you and Desa, but there will be a scheduled second MAC meeting in Geneva, right? So I'm not sure if uh, Abdurrahman, you are referring to a third MAC meeting. It could be in New York. That could be an, I mean, New York is always an option, but there's always a cost consideration that I must state up front. Mm -hmm. Online. Online. Thank you very much for giving me the floor. Dino De Lacho, CIO Pension Fund, MAG, International Organization. I, I think, and I'm definitely probably biased here because I'm based in New York, but I think that uh, if there will be an event organized in New York, it will definitely provide a good opportunity for the New York-based UN entities, and there are many funds and programs to get to know more about the IGF and have definitely an opportunity for exchange and information. So uh, from my point of view, I think it is a great idea. Thank you. Um, thank you. Good morning, Justin Fair, uh, MAG member, US government. Um, so sure, yeah. And trips to New York are always easy for me, so I always welcome them. But, um, I do think that there is an advantage, uh, as was just previously said, for doing MAG meetings in New York, if it's possible. Um, I, I heard the idea for a side event, and side events have certain utility, but I, I will say they often get lost in the mess uh, around major events like the Summit for the Future or High Level Week, and there's a lot of competition. The MAG meeting, particularly if the IGF leadership panel is also planning to do meetings, seems to capture uh, more attention and provide more access and open more doors and really bring a more focus onto the I, uh, onto the IGF. Um, so if it's possible for a third meeting, uh, maybe before a high level week, um, I think that there is some utility uh, in that given all the focus in New York this year uh, on these issues. Thank you. Down. Yeah. To, uh, I just think uh, to be held in New York, the next uh, MAG meeting is a good choice. I just want to agree with that. So we need more promotion. Can you repeat that, please? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, one more. There you go. I think we are going to have the next MAC meeting in Geneva in, at the end of May. Maybe we can help have that in in New York. I think that's a good idea for promotion. 
not sure of the high level meeting or something like that. I'm not sure yet. So, so, so what, uh, what we think of is that because we we, we analyze where is where is the community for IGF and we find that there is there is a good representation in Geneva, and there is a good representation in New York mainly on 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 international level. So I would I would go for, I mean the option is, is have a third meeting, uh, uh, on on the mag this year. Uh, I don't know if we need to to just make sure that we have two meetings per year or we can have three meetings per year. We can have three. We have three meetings per year. And 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 we might have an agenda, just a smaller agenda for for that. And and we have the. Uh, the high level political forum in uh, July, and we have future summit in, in September. So I think if we can have a meeting uh, on that, and as a hosting country, uh, we will be more than happy to join our effort together to to have that uh, joint meeting with the MAG. Right, thank you. Alisa? Um. So, so it, at the moment, it kind of sounds like we're going to have a meeting to have a meeting in New York because a lot of people are going to be meeting in New York. Um, and um, I think that's something we should um, we should be careful about of scheduling a meeting, flying halfway across the world to have a meeting in New York. I was more thinking about doing outreach to um, um, the people attending the, the Summit of the Future, not having a um an kind of internal mag meeting um um yeah just that was my idea not to have a mag meeting okay uh justin then bruna and just like to apologize to salio we're just getting the mag members first and okay. justin um, uh, or even just have a magazine as a uh, market. But as I just sit here and think about it, have our second magazine we can July, and I have to the Okay, it's on. It's on. I think just your know, mouth is not too close in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I was saying that um, I agree you should have a meeting to have a meeting or um, have a meeting for brand new coach. But I will note that the second idea is July, the IGF September, which does give a funnel gap uh, between our last meeting and the actual idea. So I don't know how we structure our work schedule well here, but I think that the, the second meeting was close to the IGF last time. So maybe I should think about the work and maybe there is value in that third meeting. But I agree, if it's no value, you can do it because it's not a value. And then if there really is, I do have a team of humility, I feel. It would get somehow higher. Uh, yes, I mean, as I said, we've had three meetings before, especially when the um, annual meeting is late later on. As you said, there's a six. There will be a six month break. But as Wyman said, we have to look at it and to see whether or not we have the funds to do it. If we have the funds to do it, then of course we can do it. That shouldn't be a problem. Um, I have um, Peace and then Bruna. Oh, a Bruna, lot of no. people. Bruna. Oh, Bruna, then Peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone. No, just one support for the New York meeting, given that we have the funding, because I also think it would be a great opportunity for IGF outreach. A lot of organizations um, and a lot of stakeholders will be in New York in September, and that will be perhaps a great, great, great opportunity to bring people in, to have them asking questions about this year's forum, for us to explain what's the strategic vision and how we're preparing for not just 2024 and, and, and Riyadh, but also for the mandate renewal. So given that if, if, and if we secure the fundings, that could be a very strategic movement for us, and then also allows the MAG to be both in Geneva and New York in the same year. Um, and given that a lot of our like businesses and works and, and stakeholder groups already have contacts with the missions. So it's a support for that. But if we are following through with the plans, I think it would also be very interesting for us to have like a 
some sort of a strategy meeting in that sense, like just kind of map out who are we meeting and why, and then share some of the responsibilities around that. That's all. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Bruna. Peace. Then Jordan. Thank you. Thank you, Chengitan, Chair, for the floor. I also want to just put in my support for the meeting in uh, New York. And I think it would be the fact that now we're speaking about uh, our communications, publicity and visibility, fundraising for the IGF. I think it's a very critical moment for us to use this opportunity. Maybe something that we could consider before the meeting, then we, we would lay out a strategy, a comm strategy, who are the people we are targeting so that when we go there with the presence of the mag, with the presence of the high level panel, we could really uh, leverage on that opportunity. I think it's a good opportunity. Thank you. Okay, Jordan, then Wyman. Um, thanks, Shangatai. Good morning, everyone. Jordan Carter here from ADA, a technical community um, appointee to the MAG. Um, I would find it easier to think through whether a New York meeting was a good idea or not if I had a clearer sense of the, um, the MAG's work plan. Um, so if we decided to take on a piece of work, for example, either um, a focus strategy session around the GDC, um, how we might need to update the IGF's working methods to make it perhaps a more suitable follow-up mechanism for the GDC, as an example. Um, I could see that being a really useful thing to do in New York with the proximity to the UN diplomats and missions there. Um, so, you know, call, call the problem here unfamiliarity with the IGF MAG's work planning as a new member. Um, but if if we had a clear and crisp purpose for such a meeting, um, I think it would be uh, potentially really useful. Thanks, Jordan. Quite correct. It's not just the funding. We have to have a proper agenda. Yeah. <laughs> Wyman. Um, Wyman Gokyu and Dessa. So just uh, for point of information, uh, the HLPF uh, will be scheduled for this year on 8 to 17 of July. So that is certainly, is in fact, is overlapping with the scheduled second MAC meeting in Geneva. So I guess what we are talking about will be the, in September. Again, as a reference point, most of you know that the Summit of the Future will be held on 22nd to 23rd of September. It will, of course, be a very crowded week. So it, if, if anything that is possible in the planning based on the earlier discussion, there must, must be a certain uh, specific agenda and also purpose of doing the third MAC meeting. Then the suggestion is to have it the week before. And I also like to highlight that uh, we did have organized the IGF related meeting in New York. That was the uh, expert group meeting um, scheduled in 2022, I believe. Uh, so if we can also consider any of the missions uh, that could support hosting the IGF MAP meeting. Because otherwise, it is, I would say, it's uh, difficult, if not impossible, to get a meeting room in the UN meeting services. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Wyman, and also, yes. So what we are hearing now is that there is sort of agreement that we need to do um, an outreach in New York. Uh, uh, and and if there is a need for the MAG, and and probably this is will not be feasible until we have the second meeting MAG, and see what if that if that MAG meeting is needed or not. Uh, so for outreach is okay, and what we can think of outreach is a sort of hyper activity. Uh, so uh, we might we might ask a couple of MAG members uh, to be there to talk with to the community, uh, but that will be on the outreach side. Um, activity and if there is a need in the second mag meeting uh, for for formal meeting will be as women say we will be searching for how we can handle this in in, in, in september is, is this sounds uh chair uh, yeah yes for my planning purposes i would have would hope that we could decide before june um but we can see and also as Wyman also mentioned room availability one thing that we've uh, done in the past is been hosted by missions because some missions have got facilities 
or meeting rooms. So if we could find a mission that's willing to host us, I think that would actually be better. Um, but as I, as I said, we've done it before, and it just it's a matter of planning. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, we can do whatever. Yeah. Um, okay. There's a lot of. Um, I think it was. I'll give the floor to Chris while I sort out who's next. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Good morning, okay. everyone. Happy to. Step into the void here. Um, I, I, I'm probably harking back a little to Alyssa's comment, um, but not not because I want to discount this idea. I think some outreach is good, but I do, and, and apologies, I joined a couple of minutes late, so I perhaps missed the sort of framing of this. Um, but I think it's going to be really necessary to have a very clear idea of what it is we're actually um, trying to do here in terms of outreach. Like, is it... Is it outreach for this year's event? So to try and get more engagement at the 2024 IGF and people along, or is it a broader engagement to try and position the IGF going forward? In which case, are we primarily looking at targeting and influencing perhaps discussions around the GDC and therefore perhaps the, the IGF has follow-up mechanism discussion, which is separate, in which case I think high level week or even prior to that would be a little too late because the GDC is going to be um, prepared already, um, presumably. Um, or are we looking to the WISIS review process and, and positioning the IGF in relation to that, in which case maybe high level week is, is good, but maybe also a CSTD session would be um, equally useful to try and position that and make, make our arguments and our, our sort of outreach in that case. Um, so I think some some sort of good clarity on that would be really um, necessary before we um, make too much progress with the planning. One thing I do think is that some some earlier engagement in relation to the GDC, and I'm at this point talking in the next month or so, is is going to be really necessary if we want to progress that idea uh, of IGF as a uh, a follow-up mechanism and that's probably not going to be a mag meeting um, but we do need to think strategically about what it would be um, and what we can manage to um, resource or, or um, uh, allow for in terms of being an active part of that discussion not not as a member state probably but we're going to have to speak and speak to the member states who are going to be negotiating that global digital compact All right thank you I don't think it's saying what's it could be the outreach uh as well as continued um planning and if it's the week before um I would I'd ask um Shangatai, maybe we could even have a um mission day where we invite the to the um, that would add some kind of cloud up why I'm getting a, a feedback. But, um, so I think we think it will probably come back to it at the end of the day, um, because I'm sure we would have had some additional thoughts and we could decide whether or not, um, we could decide whether or not, um, if it's feasible for the the third one, but I I, I myself um, in support for the third meeting. We have two non mag members who've been raising their hands. I think I would just give them a chance to say, and then we'll go back to the list because a lot of mag people spoke yesterday as well. So. And I'm sorry for um, not saying your name properly, Salio and Diana. Hello, colleagues. Good morning. So I would like to give a short update on European 
IGF, uh, it's uh, Eurodig, and we are preparing for this event. Uh, Eurodig was uh, launched in year 2008, and so far has held annual events, uh, each in another European country supported by a local host. In year 2024, on June 17 till 19, the event will take place in Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania. So, main uh, Eurodic events is uh, preceded by the youth, youth dialogue on internet governance. And uh, during uh, this uh, days, in parallel, uh, the main uh, Eurodic sessions, the Baltic Domain Days, will have their meetings. And on June 20th, the meeting of European AI associations is organized. So we have a full week of exciting events on digital. Uh, the program committee had several rounds of discussions on the draft program structure, and you can see it on Eurodig webpage. So three main topics uh, to be during this event, European policies and strategies, GovTech and AI with number of workshops, thematic flash sessions and partner events. So we kindly invite you to attend Eurodig on uh, 17 till 19th of June 24. So you can uh, participate physically or remotely uh, and uh, to take part in discussion discussions and help to shape the main messages to the global AGF. So registration opens on the 1st of March of uh, the Eurodic website. And uh, on the site, you can find all uh, the related information. So thank you. OK, thank you very much. Um, on my list, I do have, and I'm sorry, they may not be in the exact order. I do have Dino, Justin, Mina, and then Sumia. Thank you, Chungatai. Uh, Dino Derlacho, CIO Pension Fund, uh, MAC member, international organization. Just to confirm and to add to what you were saying, Chungatai, indeed, in New York, given the limited availability of room during many of the competing events, uh, we as UN entities, we also host events. So there is availability of conference room, of course, to be determined in terms of expected number of attendees, but there is also that availability. Pension Fund has been making available its conference room, for example, to the International Civil Service Commission and other events. Thank you. To get it clear, the Pension Fund is offering the possibility <laughs> of giving us a room. Yeah, I'm committed, <laughs> yes. Record. Over the record, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just make sure that's clear. <laughs> um, yeah, just going back to this, um, just doing a meeting for a meeting. I, I, I agree with comments. I think we need to understand the the work plan and what the purpose would be. And certainly, another meeting this year, just for a meeting's sake, is is not a worthwhile. That said, I, I did think last year. Um, with the two MAG meetings we had, that there was a lot of work that had to be done uh, after the second meeting to prepare for Kyoto uh, that was kind of done on the fly. And and a third MAG meeting, I think we did several kind of virtual to finalize the work. So there was, I think, potential value in having a third meeting last year within the work. And, um, you know, I don't know how we'll structure everything, but even if we don't get till June, a discussion of main sessions, then you know there really might need to be a third mag meeting to wrap it all up, uh, or to bring in other information. And then to the point from Chris, I think even some of the developments this year, if there is a GDC, what the H Lab report, some of these other outcomes, it might be worthwhile discussing within a mag and a more constructive meeting, um, you know, before uh, Riyadh. Um, so, I, but to the comment from I, I forget who said it. But waiting to the second MAG meeting to make that decision, I think, is way too late. Uh, so what I would suggest or uh, request is that the Secretariat kind of uh, investigate the the potential to do this, understanding that, you know, maybe somebody else needs to step forward with space. 
but the potential, what that would look like as dates. But also we've talked a little bit about the summit for the future, which is what, like a, like a two day, you know, kind of session in the Ecosoc chamber or the GA session or something like that. Um, what other events are happening? So uh, we already know there are some other events being planned around the summit for the future. They might have relevance for discussions we have here. So if there's any information that can be shared in a virtual meeting that could help inform a decision, if the secretary could also investigate that and let the bag know, I think that would be helpful. Thanks. Thank you. Um, my name is Cecilia Bumag member. Um, just continuing the conversation specifically on the outreach, I think we just have to concentrate and, and stay on the on the basics of it. Um, holding meetings and and uh, I think that uh, also the um, what Abdurrahman said yesterday and and Asim shared with their whole strategy on the outreach. I think it's super important, but um, it's also extremely important to define what we bring to to this outreach um, process. That we have uh, sharp messages. That we have a communicable agenda. That we have um, clear messages that we want to bring to each target. We it's it, I don't think that it serves a purpose to um, do those meetings just to do them. And despite the location uh, and anything, I think it's it's first important to pivot and and make sure that we stick into what messages we wanna bring. It's a very strategic year this year and we wanna make sure that we make the most of it and we bring the right messages um, that we wanna bring. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mina. Uh, Sumia, then Bruna. Thank you, uh, Sumer Gul, MAG member, government stakeholder. Um, uh, I share the comments uh, of, of colleagues about having a meeting in New York that would surely have a value, especially from promotional point of view. It will be a great opportunity. Um, just what would like to underline that outreach and engagement is, it needs to be a continuous activity for MAG and uh, overall IGF. We should not uh, get fixated to the idea that having a meeting at New, in New York, Geneva, Riyadh, but it has to be continuous. And also I share the uh, view that having only a meeting in the corner or a siloed meeting of a map in a, in a chamber is going to serve the purpose. Um, I, I'm skeptical about this. Maybe the more important thing here is the interaction with leadership of uh, agencies, UN agencies and the member states, regional groups which are uh, right now engaged in consultations on uh, the future uh, documents or the uh, processes on uh, digital cooperation. <clears throat> um, I'm sure New York also has these groups. In Geneva, we have uh, G77 group, G77 in China group. We have uh, a NAM group there in Geneva. We have European Union and VIOG and all these groups. We can arrange some meetings with these uh, groups of uh, member states, regional groups. And uh, this can be a good way for also resource mobilization and also awareness about the mandate of IGF and its future. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bruna. Uh, thanks, Shingatai. Um, sorry. Uh, just, just so it's clear, the suggestions we're discussing, right? We're discussing a third meeting instead of canceling the June 1 in Geneva, um, because if given that we have the funding, like both meetings have their benefits. Geneva is um, where the secretariat is and helps us um, outreach to a lot of the missions and so on. But I think just my points, my previous points about going to New York would be about September having a much more diverse pool of stakeholders that would allow us to do a an improved and, and even better outreach for the IGF. Um, it could be an opportunity where the host country could host one. Uh, sorry, Bruna, you're... you can come back to that, I suppose. Um, but it's clear. So the Secretary is going to look at it, uh, see the feasibility of it, see if there's an agenda to justify the meeting and also to see if we have funding for the meeting as well, because that's also very important. But and then we'll get back to you and we'll try and do that within the month. 
the, let's just give it a month uh, mm -hmm. and then we'll mm. okay so that's clear so i think we should go to the next topic now okay. do you want to um continue your statement i promise i'll be brief jenga it's okay. just um, mm -hmm. it's it's mm -hmm. just i don't know what happened with zoom i was just cut off but in any case i was just going to insist on the point about strategy um as well because just a meeting on itself as others have been pointing out won't won't we're not going to cut it right we do need some more well crafted strategy if it's to attract stakeholders and allow them to ask questions and and discuss things for us then then it's it's one thing but also going back to the discussions on the messages on the website um i think that what we need in the end of the day is not just highlighting messages we need a campaign we really need a campaign around the igf mandate renewal and and what's what is it going to mean for us so perhaps if we can get um either the working group strategy or anyone else from the MAG helping lead, this would be a, a great thing as well because we need some leadership um, on this on this discussion about the messages and how we're crafting them and, and how these are gonna be shared with the broader community, that's all. Uh, thank you, Bruna. I think we go to the next topic now, right? <clears throat> So we we missed um yesterday the was it ECA yes ECA right ECA okay. and they had technical um, difficulties so we're just gonna give them uh, their time now to give us an update ECA it's still there yeah good morning everyone uh, can you hear me yes we can. Okay, thank you. We can't see. Okay, let me try to open. Uh, okay, start my video. Yes. Okay, uh, distinguished delegates and esteemed colleagues and participants from around the, go uh, the globe, I extend to you a warm greetings uh, to be it morning or afternoon or evening depending on your current location. My name is uh, Sorina Safa. I will be representing UNECA to share with you the internet governance activities undertaken in our region Africa during the year of 2023. Recognizing UNECA's crucial role in advocating for inclusive and transparent internet governance across Africa, our primary objective is to amplify the continent voice within the global digital agenda. This commitment extends to ensure that the benefits of sustainable digital transformation are accessible to all Africans, thereby advancing the sustainable development goals. At the core of our mission lies the imperative to tackle the digital infrastructure disparities, bridging uh, policy gaps in governing emerging technologies and cultivating talent uh, capable of responding to technology advancement while also fostering capacity development for fair and equitable digital evolution. In, the, in 2023, UNECA led significant initiative in internet governance through collaborative effort within a diverse range of stakeholders. This initiative addressed pressing issue uh, to the continent, including the global digital governance, uh, digital public infrastructure and it is safeguards, the gender, uh, gender digital divide, cybersecurity and digital rights, among others. UNICA remains steadfast in its commitment to the principle of inclusivity within internet governance forums, as a supporter of IGF regional and global initiatives and forums, including the Angus and Wizards and Wizards Plus 20 review, which will be uh, conducting before May, aligning it with the global digital compact. 
In terms of policy declaration, UNECA facilitated the formulation of an African policy declaration for global digital compact through regional review meeting. This collaborative effort engaged the Office of Special Envoy uh, on Technology, the Government of South Africa, uh, UN Regional Coordinator Office for South Africa, and UNDP. This underscores Africa's pivotal role in shaping the global digital compact and ensuring active participation in determining its digital future. Under digital ID and interoperability, UNECA has been supporting member states in implementation of good digital ID framework principle in three focus uh, countries, Ethiopia, Nigeria, and Gambia. Uh, gender uh, digital divide, through it is Connected African Girls Initiative in collaboration with UN Women, ITU and the partner government, UNECA hosted coding camp to address the gender divide and uh, ICT skill gap for the girls aged between 12 to 25. This coding camp have been successfully reached over 40,000 young girls across eight African countries. Uh, UNECA, in the partnership uh, with the Rwandan government, has established also STEAM Center in Kigali to advance STEAM uh, education across Africa. Also, uh, UNECA has established, uh, in collaboration with the Republic of uh, Congo, uh, African Center for Research and Coordination in Artificial Intelligence. This year, uh, we'll be working on capacity building. UNECA continue to conduct comprehensive training program tailored to government officials and uh, African parliamentarians on cybersecurity, content responsibility, and governance uh, process. Also, UNECA will be uh, focused in digital divide, bridging the digital divide. Currently, we are in the process of collaborating with ITU's uh, and UNICEF GIGA initiative to connect every uh, African school to the internet by 2023, supporting government connectivity um, contract and uh, utilizing innovative financial models. In conclusion, UNECA call for collective uh, action in shaping a positive digital future. We emphasize the importance of breaking down silos, sharing information and engaging all stakeholders. Thank you for the opportunity. I just have um, one comment on with regards to uh, communication and communication strategy. I don't think we want to leave here not knowing for sure how we're going to approach that, whether or not it's going to be a working group or we have a um, mailing list and people uh, um, just subscribe to it. So what do we want? Do we want another working group or just a mailing list? Uh, my initial idea was just since, as I said, uh, we had many people from outside of the MAG as well. We just have a general working group that um, supports the communication strategy. And of course, it will be supported by a mailing list. It's not just a mailing list. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing to do is get people's email addresses. Then we can have uh, meetings you know, online meetings to discuss what we're going to be doing and how we're going to do it because uh, everybody's not going to be doing everything. There's going to be people who are experts on TikToks and people who are experts on, um, you know, website, uh, blogs, et cetera. So we want to, to have the whole range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The MAG agreeing and approving to another working group on communications is the question I'm putting forward. Oh, sorry, it could just be, sorry. <laughs> okay, now I get it, I get it. So it'll be a working group um, led by the secretariat. Okay, so that's confirmed, thank you. Uh, Bruno and Chris, and then Octavia. 
Thanks, Chengatai. Um, just reinforcing my points from before that um, it would be very interesting to have the working group strategy waiting in on that. I I know I understand um, the for the strategy to work. Secretariat needs to help lead that. Um, that's that's a great point, and and thank you a lot for taking the leadership in that sense. But it would be very nice to have the the working group strategy also helping um, shape this strategy because again it's it's not just posting um some stories on the website and or even a couple of videos on TikTok but also having like a well thought out um strategy and, and a campaign on behalf of that. So it, it's more than just saying like oh hi we're the UN Internet Governance Forum but then kind of translating our issues and discussions into a more kind of not just simple but way more appealing language than the ones we're using every day and I guess my main concern here is that um, we go too much into the policy chat um, that doesn't really um, translate into social media networks and so on. So A, let's please include the working group strategy. There's a lot of stuff that we can discuss around that and B, um, we need more than, than we need a campaign again, sorry. Okay, so I think yesterday somebody had explained something between marketing and sales. So the working group on strategy will produce a strategy for the IGF, and it will be the job of the communications team to then create a strategy for bring those things to reality. So they're, they're two totally different things, and you really we, we really need the experts on communications to um, take part. They will create a communication strategy. Um, a communication strategy is different than a strategy for the IGF itself. So you need the persons that are, are experienced and knowledgeable on creating these things. It's, it's a totally different um, I suppose expert set for or skill set for for the two. So I don't think I think also that strategy has its hands full with keeping up to with responses to what's going on um, with the IGF as well as coming up with themselves for themselves a strategy for the IGF. We've been talking about the strategy. We, we said, okay, let's update the, the previous one. Um, but I haven't seen much activity on that. So we really need the um, the strategy group to concentrate on that. We, we don't want to, to, um, to divert their attention to communications. Communications needs its own full um, body of persons to concentrate on that. Chris? Yeah, I, I think actually, Carol, you just kind of said what I was going to say. I think it would be great to have a communications working group and to have that working group picking up the communications um, and working on that because obviously that's something that working group strategy has been doing a lot of in the last few weeks. Um, uh, very much aware of that. Um, so I, I think the idea of a, a separate working group that actually works on the communications is is great. Um, I, I think we need to, yeah, make sure that the work, the interconnection between those two groups is very close because obviously a communications um, approach and team and working group doesn't come up with its own ideas a marketing campaign a marketing team doesn't come up with the products it markets it just takes what it's given and, and markets those and i think in that in this case that's a, a model that we need to um be very clear about because otherwise you you have the risk of two different groups coming up with you know two potentially conflicting or at least non-complementary um strategies and ideas for uh, what the goals are what the um outcomes should be so yeah definitely i, I think and, and if it's a working group led by the secretariat i think that puts it in a slightly different um category to a mag working group anyway um and i think that's that's not a bad thing i i think yeah like looking to what um Henriette, i think said here in the in the chat 
this is something we've had in the past um, and we perhaps should look to how those worked I and mean, maybe how the lessons that can be learned from those past communications working groups in the MAG. Um, thanks. Thanks, Chris. Um, Octavia, your hand was up and was down. I don't know if you still want to say something. Give it a six count. No, okay. Beans? We will move on to the themes. Uh, most persons have gotten the email um, with the themes from yesterday. So the Secretariat could just share and we'll go through. Okay, so the floor is open to discussion on these themes and sub themes. Well, I, I just wrote it in the chat because on the on the previous point on communications, I, I I I had a suggestion in the chat to join forces with the LP, the leadership panel, to on communications issue. I think we have a a new resource we didn't have in the past, at least from since last year, uh, which is the the leadership panel. They have a reputation. That's why they they were selected for the leadership panel, and I think we can use in the good sense, all of them to 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 convey the, the message that we decide on. Thank you. Okay, so we have um, Alyssa and Sava. Thank you. Um... I was wondering on the 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 five different um uh, or the, the 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 different post themes now if and the 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 reflections and comments that were made yesterday by mag members and and other um observers um if the if the Saudi government could or if Abdul Rahman could comment on um the proposals already made um to hear a bit more um if our line of thinking is in line with uh, with what you were thinking. Uh, thanks. Sava? Um, thank you, Chair. Hello, everyone. I'm Sava here, a MAG member from the technical community. Um, giving the comment on the themes for this year, um, I, I would go with unleashing our multi-stakeholder digital future. Um, the reason I say this is because it encompasses with the, um, several essential um, topics and also our intentions um, raised during the stock taking process. Um, I believe the word even unleashing, it will implicate um, like unlocking uh, uh, potential and also um, allowing a dynamic growth for the IGF. 
and the word multi-stakeholder as we're talking about this year is it's strategically for the IGF. So it would really implicate if we also have the word by itself, the multi-stakeholders. Um, and, and thirdly, we also have a digital future. And I believe those topics um, taken during the stop taking process, I believe they all would be included in this digital future world. And yeah, I believe this um, title would really um, um, be our team and, and it will help us to uh, to determine the main topics and the main discussions that I actually are going to have in this year. Thank you. Okay. So you're looking for a combination of one and three? Hmm? Okay. Pardon? It's already mentioned in the slide. Okay. No, I just wanted to confirm that you're looking at one and three, a mixture. No? If you allow me, just uh, it's just like something like unleashing our 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 digital future, something like that. Okay. So, Max, if you want to combine the idea that is in number three, sorry, you want to combine the idea that is in number three with the idea that it's in number one. Yes, um, so it would be, the third one is unlocking the potentials, right? Mm -hmm. And I would go with unlocking, adding into the multi-stakeholder and adding the digital future into that one. Can we add this one, unleashing uh, our, digital, our, our, our digital future? I think our uncommon is, is, is somewhere very close to other. Um, Thank you, Chair. Um, I have uh, one query because yesterday we were also talking with the leadership panel about digital SDGs, and uh, I cannot see that anywhere in the in the list or in the. Uh, elements that have been displayed in the slides. Is that going to be some separate track, this digital SDGs, or uh, this has to be addressed during this annual meeting as well? I think it will be separate. So is it sort of um, a product that LB and MAG will be working on it? And hopefully they will announce it on, on the IGF itself. Thank you for this clarification, because then I would like to uh, um, indicate the MAG towards uh, the report of the Secretary General. Um, I think this was the roadmap on digital cooperation in which Secretary General also indicated or pointed at the need for the IGF to adapt, innovate, and reform to support effective governance of digital commons. Uh, digital commons is also a term, term I, I think can be useful that we should consider because uh, commons, it's, it also embodies multi-stakeholderism, also embodies uh, the uh, ideas proposed by the host. Um, I, I, maybe this should also be kept in consideration till we reach a final decision on it. Thank you. So I, I, I was thinking that maybe uh, Finserf is here today. He will say that uh, the digital future that we want. <laughs> so <laughs> something in alignment with the internet that we want. But this is, this is a good option. Alga? Uh, thank you, Carol. Olha uh, Kiriluk, first year MAG member, civil society. So I just wanted to comment on the overarching uh, team as uh, we have been discussing a lot yesterday that uh, 
uh, this has to be something which would uh, also position uh, the unique role the IGF is uh, having and uh, it's a uh, uh, multi-stakeholder character and I think uh, this is uh, really important. I uh, also uh, took a note that uh, we want to have these uh, linkages with the other internet governance uh, processes which are happening uh, this year. So uh, probably that would also make sense uh, to reflect already in the uh, IGF team this year uh, what is uh, uh, what is the ask for in the other processes, for example, in the Global Digital Compact, uh, let's say yeah, uh, the GDC in the recently released uh, uh, draft of the key elements is uh, referring uh, that uh, uh, there has to be, first, uh, uh, it refers to fostering of a strength of digital cooperation, but it also mentions uh, uh, the recognition of the uh, roles and responsibilities of uh, respective stakeholders as it was uh, envisaged in the Geneva Declaration. So, uh, you, and I also really liked this uh, reference uh, offered by the host country uh, about uh, leading towards unity. So I was trying to somehow match those uh, themes and also to correlate it with the global digital compact. I will drop in the chat. Uh, um, uh, okay, it says it's too long. Okay, uh, maybe afterwards, but uh, first just uh, to tell. So I was thinking maybe we can uh, frame it something like uh, uh, fostering unity through multi-stakeholder digital cooperation. Or it could be something like uh, unity in diversity, advancing multi-stakeholder digital cooperation or multi-stakeholder solutions in digital age, something around that. And I will drop in the chat so that it's uh, easier to comprehend. And also uh, regarding the sub-teams, I don't think we need uh, to cut those because the problem is not in the sub-teams. Uh, uh, the more we have them, the, the more we allow the diversity for the uh, submitters to suggest what they want to discuss so that we can have diverse agenda. But I think the problem is more like how we want, uh, how many sessions we want to fit into each into each of those uh, sub teams so that we don't really overload the agenda, but at the same time, make sure that the agenda is uh, diverse enough. Uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, Chris, thank you, Olga. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I agree with a, lot, with a lot of what Olga said, and um, it, yeah, it'll be great to, yeah, thank you, Olga, for posting that in the chat. Um, I think there's a bit of an interesting chat uh, going on, a discussion going on in the chat about making sure that we actually give enough context to the word multi-stakeholder in including it in the um, in the overarching theme, and I think that's important. I think we're sort of making our way towards that, and I think Olga's suggestions really help there. Um, we do need to be aware that it's not you know a word that everyone understands, but it is a word that is central to the IGF. It's central to WISIS, and we need to be really leaning into that at this time. I, I'm absolutely committed to the idea that however what it, i'm i'm very open to different um uh constructions and i think it's sort of at your point carol that we want to have an active um kind of word there to sort of really drive a, a sort of a, an active idea of the theme is a good one um so but making sure that we include that multi-stakeholder reference i think is fundamentally important in positioning the IGF and its point of difference. It's the, the the distinctive element that has driven it for the past 19 years. Um, and that we want to highlight as we go into um, discussions of new and, and different structures to really highlight that this has worked, that this is a, a process that has involved many people in really constructive dialogues const with constructive outputs as we noted yesterday in the um, discussion with the um, leadership panel, uh, even if those outputs have not necessarily been conveyed and communicated in um, the most comprehensive way that we might hope for. Um, so yeah, that, I think we're, we're getting close and or at least we're, we're moving towards it, but I would really, really stress the need to make that reference to the multi-stakeholder in the theme. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Chris. Then I have Justin, Bruna, Octavia, then Mina. Um, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to come back. There was a question about the digital SDGs, and there was a you mentioned 
uh, process. I was just, who was working on that? Um, and then it just, uh, so that's a question. And then um, on this issue of the, uh, the theme, um, so I agree with those who have commented that um, it would be good to have a reference to multi-stakeholder uh, within uh, this. I think it is a pivotal year on multi-stakeholder. We know it's the 10th year anniversary of Net Mundial. We know that um, there's a lot of conversations happening in New York uh, around multi-stakeholder. I believe the Secretary General has noted that multi-stakeholder is key to how we achieve the digital future. And so um, I think the IGF and particularly the multi-stakeholder advisory group uh, should be clear about the 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 need for multi-stakeholder uh, within this. I think I, I, I liked the uh, proposal from Asaba for the unleashing uh, our multi-stakeholder digital uh, future, but I also see fostering unity uh, for you know some multi-stakeholder digital cooperation or digital future uh, could also be good. So happy to work with others to kind of hone that, but I do think it's important uh, that we uh, continue to champion the multi-stakeholder approach. Thank you. Uh, thank you. One slight note. Um, uh, the overarching theme should also fit nicely on. <laughs> um, yes, please. <laughs> Just to clarify the SDGs, the digital SDGs, it, it, is, it is emerging discussion with the Fint Surf, and he promised to get us his idea yesterday and send it to the MAG and LB to work on it. It's a working paper. And based on on how that's how we can contribute to that paper, the, the key idea is just if this technology is um, is it sustainable for hundreds of years? Uh, there's something that we need to do to do today to make it sustainable. So I think that that working paper might be uh, yeah, developed to, to to a sort of a product or or a, a announcement or something that we can integrate with you. In. Runa. Thanks, Shingatai. Um, I was going to go in the same direction as you. Um, just maybe perhaps a, a suggestion for us to keep the overarching theme like as short and, and as simple as it gets. Um, like yesterday, I did a different suggestion that's not in the board that is our multi stakeholder digital future. Um, it's simple, it's very um, stream like very direct in terms of what we want to achieve and, and what do we want to discuss. Um, Another one could be just playing with the, the fragmentation discussions, like unfragmented multi-stakeholderism, um, just to reassure that everyone continues to be in the same table and discussing things and and um, is still joining the IGF as, as this core forum um, that we um, all care about. So these are my two comments on that, but, but just in terms of... Um, how many kind of like signals we might give into other processes. I also believe it's it, it will be kind of beneficial to us to keep a very simple um, overarching theme and direct because the more we make references to process like the GDC, um, the more we might be forgetting other discussions. So if it's something very basic, then it, it kind of like applies to every single other process. And as Justin was saying, like multi-stakeholders seem to be um, the new word of the year, right? Um, and we all seem to be referring to that, even though it might seem like we're back 20 years ago or something like that. So that is one point. And my second thing about the SDGs, um, the digital SDGs, um, it's just that we have already discussed um, the same thing in the working group strategy um, about kind of working on um, some sort of a table or um, a little bit of a working document on some comparisons around topics the IGF has been discussing and the SDGs themselves. But it's also important to note that processes like WISIS, um, they have all also been trying to do some sort of a deep dive on the debate around um, digital SDGs and so on. So regardless of the strategy we're taking forward and or what's going to be the next step on that note, either a Vint um, originated paper or something that comes from working group strategy, it's really important for us to cross-reference the WIS's, um work on that sense as well. So that's all. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Bruno. Octavian? Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think... Um, I agree. I, I think it's a long stretch that multi-stakeholder will be the word of the year. I was there 20 years ago as well, I think. So <laughs> I'm willing I'm willing to play 
uh, along with it though, and 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 maybe even join the communications group. Um, I think a couple of comments. I I do really like. Uh, I think we had a colleague mentioning that this is a year of elections. Um, and keeping the internet online, um, particularly for an election year like this one, is something I would love to see somehow reflected. Um, in my culture, we tend to maybe not be so short and snappy, and I understand that themes um, also need to be that. Um, but finding somewhere between some of the solutions, particularly that colleagues um, Jordan and Olga um, have put forth, I think sort of cement, yes, the multi-stakeholderism, but the digital commons, I think, is important, particularly in an election year, understanding how the digital commons is as important. Um, uh, as 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 many other spaces that we create in 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 that, um, and I think uh, Olga's suggestion, perhaps taking those two and putting the digital commons somewhere in in Olga's uh, suggestion would be would be a really a, a really great pairing. I want to just add that uh, I English is my third or fourth language, and so um, I I don't want to assume. But I do know that unleashing, at least um, in many cultures, can have connotations of things that are not necessarily pleasant um, uh, or, or are associated with perhaps more aggressive behaviors or, or a, a, yeah, um, a, a sort of, a, a, for the lack of a better word, um, um, an, aggress an, an aggressive thrust forward. And so I was wondering whether we could look at maybe in, in the suggestions that colleagues have had with unleashing, um, looking at connecting, unlocking, um, better or native English speakers, absolutely please chime in here, but but finding a way that sort of cements the idea behind unleashing, but perhaps with, with a different word. Um, and good morning, everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Octavia. Um, many? Okay, um, Menin Sesiadu, a member uh, from private sector. I just wanted to second the idea for the um, for the multi stakeholder word to be in the overarching thing. It's 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 what sets apart IGF from any other um, uh, meeting or, or process. So I definitely agree that we should keep it. Um, not particular preference, but I think five and six are are good options. And then um, just a quick note on the sub themes, just to make sure that we keep it short, um, that we make sure that ideally they don't go beyond three and potentially adding the fourth uh, uh, as an extra one. Um, if it doesn't fit the three, that will be focusing particularly on processes, GDC, the WSIS. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, some proposals uh, as well on that front. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mini. Uh, Karina? Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Karina Virarda from Argentina, MAC member for the record. I wrote on the chat uh, regarding the point uh, limit the risk and leasing the potential, capacity building, digital economy. I would like to propose changing the order and um, uh, slightly the idea to highlight to the positives we have from technology and the internet first. And then we, where we need to pay attention to the risk. First, the potential and the, to the risk after. Um, I, it will be unleashing the potential while understanding the risk. This is my proposal. Thank you. John? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I actually support for uh, this you know, comment in the future. I see one uh, in the chat box that is empowering our shared digital future. I, I definitely understand multi stakeholder, the nature of that. And I am standing for tech community. That's the reason I'm here because of multi stakeholder I'm involved. But still, I think in some culture, 
I think with the topic of this year should be inclusive because we still need the multilateral to work together to bring governments here, ministerial. I'm afraid in some culture, this multilateral could be, have some different understandings in some culture that will make the governments aside. We don't want to just be ourselves. We want to work aligned with, uh, I think both sides are important. So I, I hope it could be inclusive, though I really support multilateral. Thank you. So thanks, Chair. I'm speaking from my capacity as a MAG member. Um, I can see there is there is two um, arguments in the room, one on multi-stakeholder, the other is on future. So I was thinking about what, what we are trying to say here, here is that we have a common future, but that common future will not have an until multi-stakeholder model is, is working. So I, I just have a suggestion uh, of... Uh, one one digital future multi-stakeholders so that's will confine a message of accountability for multi-stakeholders i don't know if this is uh yeah, any, uh can be uh, uh so even even from marketing perspective just try to keep things short short so my suggestion is uh one digital future multi-stakeholders chris chris yeah, yes, thank you. Multi-stakeholder. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, actually, Abdul Rahman, uh, that, that's a, a, an interesting um, spin on it. I, I, I think it needs a, a little bit of work just in terms of the, the formulation, but um, I, I think I see where you're going with it, and I, I do like, um, the, yeah, to, to, to do something with it. I mean, I, I think the other comment is I, I, I do take the point that um, we need to be inclusive with this, but I also do think right now is the moment we need to be strong in our, our own principle here of, of a multi-stakeholder approach, and we need to make reference to that. And that means we need to bring people along with us a bit. And that, you know, there will be some governments who sort of see a multi-stakeholder as, as something um, to be resisted. But I don't think hiding the fact that we're multi-stakeholder and proud of it is is the way to go here. I think we need to win them over to um, the argument um, of, of a multi-stakeholder approach, um, because that if you if you take away the multi-stakeholder approach, you take away the IGF. That it, it's really as simple as that. There is no IGF without the multi-stakeholder approach. Um, now that doesn't mean we put multi-stakeholder in the theme, the overarching theme every year. And as I mentioned yesterday, it's we go back to 2014 before we find an overarching theme where we did reference multi-stakeholder very explicitly. But that that's a I, I think probably when we did that in 2014, we were looking to the WISIS plus 10 in 2015 um, and the importance of that concept um, and really driving it home. And I think looking at the WISIS plus 20 now next year the importance of driving that concept home of taking ownership of it as a very positive thing that is inclusive and can be a, a productive thing for all governments and all other stakeholders as well um, is is something I, I really feel that we should should lead into. Um, so yeah, I, I, as I say, I think we're, we're getting creative with it now and I think that's great. So um, thank you to all and looking forward to continuing that. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, I think we can have a, at the beginning of the theme, something that's really powerful, action oriented. And what I, what Chris triggered just now was that, you know, how you have the dash, you put a dash, a multi-stakeholder approach. So we find out what we want in the front of the dash, dash, a multi-stakeholder approach. So for example, if we, um, I know a lot of people want to talk about the common, um, the common digital future, but let's say if we do, uh, taking something from Karina and Chris, if we look at um, minimizing risks and unleashing the potential <clears throat> for the internet, dash a multi-stakeholder approach. I'm just giving that as an example. I don't I don't know what the first part of the dash is. Okay. 
So who do we have? Bruna? Thanks, Carol. Um, just on the, again, um, reinforcing some of the points Chris um, brought up about multi-stakeholderism. I think when we address this, when we bring this word into our overarching theme is already in like an inclusivity um, exercise. I do understand um, the criticism or let's say the skepticism some countries and missions might have towards the idea for a multi-stakeholder model of participation. But in the end of the day, if we look to the roots of the word is really bringing everybody to the table and bringing and talking about inclusion, right? The multi-stakeholder model became relevant um, as part of an assessment that for the discussion of certain policies and, and debates and implementation, we needed to bring different expertise into the table. So that's why I still believe it's an inclusivity related words. And, and as Chris said, like this year's IGF um, also has the goal and perhaps the task of um, providing some answers to ongoing questions or some answers to ongoing criticism about um, what we do and, and the way we have been working on things. So. I would still, I'm still supportive of, of us bringing the multi-stakeholderism into the overarching team as kind of the, the clear message that we want to bring, right? Um, as for the size of it, um, I like, um, although I like the dash idea, I, I, I it hints me the impression that we're talking about a double tiered kind of discussion. So I would perhaps maybe prefer just one sentence, like let it be our common digital future, our multi-stakeholder digital future, unleashing multi-stakeholderism. I think it's more basic and 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 very kind of direct in terms of what we want. Because if we do like digital for goods, blah, 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 or our common future and blah, 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 it kind of hints um, a double tier approach to the topic. But maybe it's, it's, it's just a non-native speaker also um, interpretation of the suggestion and, and just kind of bringing that up because the IGF is also like majoritively um, non-native non speaker as well, right? So we need to base to maybe um, perhaps have a as basic as possible language just so it crosses um, as many groups and spaces as we want. So that's just my comment on that. Thank you. Uh, don't see any more hands. Oh, sorry. Justin. Oh, I always seem to miss Justin's. <laughs> sorry, Justin and Saba and Dino. Um, thanks. I'll be quick. I was just trying to tie together some some, some themes that were raised and proposed to reflect it. I, I still like this unleashing our digital future. Um, I think that's good. Um, and this notion of instead of a, a tack, I think maybe a colon. So unleashing our digital future colon, a multi-stakeholder approach uh, could be a way to combine some ideas. Maybe a new, I don't know, can we, can we add a 12? I'm just looking, can we can we add a 12 and put unleashing our digital future colon a multi-stakeholder approach? Because I think that's kind of a combination of some ideas that have been proposed. Thanks. Okay, just before I go to the um to the next person, uh Secretary, can we the ones that in the list that haven't had any traction, can we just move them out of the list to make it shorter? Don't delete them, just move them below or out of the way. Um, some of them aren't taking any traction at all, so we could just take them out. Okay, we have uh, many Dino Saba. 
Thank you, Mene Nathasia Lumak member. I just wanted to support uh, what Justin said um, and, and the proposal as well. I think it's a very good summary of, of what we have been discussing and it's a good reflection of the message that we want to bring at this year's IGF. So um, a strong, let's say, plus one. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dino, among member international organization. Um, my comment is, I, I think that the case for uh, the word of uh, multi-stakeholder, the inclusion, the concept has been made very well. My my question, if you will, uh, try to play a little bit devil's advocate here. We have a 43 pages of result of the thematic input. Is there a merit? in looking at summarizing those 43 pages and try to identify a team that can be added to this multi-stakeholderism and define its purpose for this year. Because I, my impression, my feeling is we are putting next to the multi-stakeholderism words that are very generic, very, very high level. And I'm not sure whether they are capturing these 43 pages of work. So these 43 pages are about teams. We survey everybody. We have more than 300 uh, entities that, uh, 310 stakeholders that have expressed their opinion vis-a-vis -vis what they feel is the priority from their point of view and from their perspective. So my question is, is there a merit in trying to summarize the, the emerging team or teams that came out from that survey and adding it to the multi-stakeholderism. Thank you. Uh, just trying to work this through. Um, I mean, the most popular theme was AI. Yeah, yeah, please. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's why <clears throat> Karina's approach covers it because when you talk about reducing risk, that covers a lot of the things that are in the themes. Also, you talk about unleashing or unlocking potential. That also covers things that are in the themes that we got in. So it's very it's a it's a good umbrella. You're reducing risk and you're unlocking the potential. So I think this is um, what we are trying to tackle here is two things. One is that the unleashing, for example, unleashing our digital future is is everything that we do in IGF. Now, because this year is, is very critical to, to us, we want to showcase the multi-stakeholder approach. And I think that's the message that's getting everybody that we can have a good, better digital future, and the way that we do it, we're able to do it through multi-stakeholders. So when I was thinking about sub-theme, probably will not get a sub-theme on, on multi-stakeholder, but we need to show, especially in this conference, how the multi-stakeholder work together on each of sub-theme to deliver the future that we want or to give the opportunity or unleash the opportunity that we want. So this is, I think this is the thinking behind, behind uh, this one. Saba, then Otis, then Jordan. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would also like to re reinforce what um, some of the points that Chris mentioned earlier. Um, we all know that um, the theme for the Summit of the Future includes multilateral light. And um, multi-stakeholderism is one of the core part of the IGF. And having that word inside of our teams would be very powerful in my case. And um, also to what Dino said, I think um, the perspective of the community coming from their input um, would be added to this word, which is called the multi-stakeholder. So I support having this word, especially included in the teams. Thank you.
Oh, no, we just noticed that we don't have unleashing our multi-stakeholder digital future. I mean, that could also be a multi-stakeholder approach, but unleashing our multi-stakeholder digital future, that could be a, another option to look at. Um, audience. audience. Uh, yeah, maybe. I think multi-stakeholder and common are basically so closely related. We can just take out common. Yeah, yeah um, I just wanted to reiterate what I said, um, what I talked about yesterday, um, because if you look at the thematic um, inputs um, and what was presented yesterday, um, the, there's a part of unleashing, uh, but also... Uh, there's a lot of concern in terms of how this digital future will be governed. Uh, will it be ethical? Um, uh, will it? Uh, will there be safeguards, especially uh, in the area in the area of generative AI that's and deep fakes? Um, that's been a theme um, in terms of um, uh, the digital sphere throughout this year. So I think um, it, it's good to have unleashing, but also. Um, to to also realize that there are a lot of concerns and 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 reassurance that the community is seeking and uh, that are reflecting this in in um, uh, in the theme is it could be um, important. Sorry, another option is to have the short title and then at the bottom, you know, something like I don't know, towards a common, safe, secure, blah blah. blah digital future as a sub text to the um, overarching theme. Uh, that's just another option so that we can have everything there. I mean, more things in the um, subtitle and have still have that short um, overarching theme that we can put everywhere. And that's easily readable and you don't have to pass it to understand it. Um, we've moved into the coffee break time. So if persons want to grab a coffee, um, grab their break and bring it back in, please feel free to do so. Uh, okay, Alyssa's angry with me. <laughs> no, sorry. But if you do, because it, it is, um, we're way past the break time and we don't want to lose time at the end. Okay. So you're suggesting we carry on, but they go? Or do you want to take a break so you could mull over things and then come back? Why don't yeah. we have Jordan and Wout and then we can go? Yes. Okay, Jordan, Wout, and then we'll take a break. Everybody mull over it and we'll try to conclude after the break. Okay, so sitting between you and coffee, just briefly, I think I quite like the our multi-stakeholder digital future. The only thing that gives me pause about it is that sense of trajectory. So if we like so if it was about our our um if it had some sense, I don't like unleashing because it's too sort of violent, but improving or, you know, something that conveys a sense that we need to make it better. So we realize more opportunities and manage more risks and has digital in it, I think would be helpful. Um, but if we can't get the words to to convey that safely, I'm I'm happy with number three as, as this kind of one that will do. I think this is already a subtext to IGF 24, so I'm not sure if we should add a subtitle to the subtitle, even though I found that instinctively appealing, Chagatai. So that's all I've got. Yeah, I think um, we're hearing that somehow we need to speak to managing the risk so that, because it's a concern of people, people concern, oh, AI is going to take over the world. So we need to, to put in there that um, we, we, we need to manage the risk. We don't want to con control any innovation, but we need to manage the risk because people are concerned about the risk. Who's next? Wout. Wout? Yes. <clears throat> thank you. Wout and Atris, uh, observer, thank you for this opportunity. I've been listening to all the options and the impression that I have from many contributions is that we are trying to put the IGF up front, show that we are capable of coming up with potential solutions, potential recommendations, etc. So what I would suggest for you to think about is to turn it around. 
So something like multi-stakeholder, strengthening multi-stakeholder cooperation, and then something like unleash or improve the potential. And that allows you to put under the subtopics, look, we're going to address AI, look, we're going to address cybersecurity, gender, whatever. And that would put the focus more on the IGF and then on the potential it has. So as a suggestion, and another thing I'd like to share is that I think that what we've seen so far coming past on the on the sub themes and themes is that the world is on fire at this moment and we're looking at very grave consequences where the internet is an integral weapon that is being used at the moment. So I think there is a need. Yeah, yeah. It, is, it is on, so I will switch off. I think where where was it stopped? Because I don't know where it was stopped. But uh, as a as a theme, as I said, the world is on fire. What is the role of the different stakeholders in defending our security online? And with that also offline, because of the consequences online attacks can have. And I think that is a topic that This better? Yes. So to discuss this as a as a sub theme on the roles of the different stakeholder communities to, to secure citizens, secure nations, secure industry, etc. So that's as a suggestion. And I hope it came across because there was some trouble with the microphone. Thank you. We're going to break, and after the break, we're going to have Bruna and Olga, and then it's decision time. Okay? Thank you. What time are you going to be back? You're going to have a quick break. Be back in 10. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to happen.
Yes, and then our co-chair. Many thanks. Runa, you have the floor. Well, dear. Oh, the guy changed. Hello? Yeah. Runa, you have the floor. Yes. Can anyone confirm to me whether you guys are listening? Because we're only seeing the screen right now and not the Riyadh room. Runa, we're not hearing you very clearly. Uh, can you start again, please? Jenga Tai Carol, help me. <laughs> Yes, ah, Bruna, please. Um, can you start your intervention? We don't re hear you guys. Oh, you can't hear us? Ah. You can. Thumbs up if you can hear us. Ah. Yeah, I can try interpretive dance. Can I Okay, somebody. I think you can hear me now, right? We can hear you. Oh, uh, let me just type it. Okay, we can hear you. Yeah. And if you can hear us, please go ahead. I can. I'm so sorry. It's just a lot of technical issues today. Um, no, just uh, I was just gonna go on the topics and coming back to the a few of the suggestions we were discussing. Um, again, I do think it's um some sort of like a diagnose or a discussion on the risks or anything is welcome, but i I'm really doubtful whether the overarching team is the place for us to do this exercise, as Abdul Rahman was saying, like it's really good for us to maybe use this strategic spot to reinforce something that's that's in a higher kind of concern for us. So perhaps we can go with the there's some kind of sound on the way. Um, but in in any case, um, I would just like to point out two suggestions. Then, then just reinforce the our multi stakeholder digital future as as it's been highlighted before, and then perhaps um, if we don't want to use the unleashing, which I agree with Octavia, that's um, not a good perhaps word for that. Then we can perhaps use unpacking our digital multi stakeholder future or something like that. Could be very direct and and very um, also like very direct message for the IGF to give and then unpacking also kind of hints at the idea that we will be discussing and trying to address some of the issues and, and concerns. So that's all. Thanks, Shintai. Sorry for the, the problems. Thank you, Bruna. I like the word unpacking. Um, Olga? Oh, there you are. There you go. Okay, thank you, Carol. Uh, so from those options that we have currently left, uh, I would also support the, our multi-stakeholder digital future. And uh, I am uh, absolutely don't uh, like the word uh, unleashing because I think uh, it sounds uh, like something was held off for a long time and we had like 20 years to unleash something until now. So I think uh, if we want to use any web, that would be uh, that should be forward-looking. Uh, so that uh, kind of summarizing what has been done so far and uh, what we are aiming to do uh, in the future. So whatever can be better than unleashing. Uh, and uh, even if we choose any other option, not just this uh, multi-stakeholder digital future, I would not use, <clears throat> uh, apologies, I would not use uh, the word unleashing. It could be anything like advancing, enabling, empowering, fostering, whatever. But uh, 
but unleashing is just I, I don't feel this is uh, the proper thing uh, for this because we, we, we should show what has been done, uh, what has been achieved uh, by IGF uh, during those uh, 20 years that there has been some added value and uh, in this way it looks uh, as if uh, we didn't manage to prove something and we, we still want to, to give it another try. Thank you, Olga. Abdul Rahman. Uh, thank you. Um, I had a couple of discussions during the break, and, and I, I was thinking of um, the world multi-stakeholder, and, and I just wanted to, to look at it from a different angle. Is that um, is it is it more more tactical? This is this is concern number one. Is this more about how component rather than uh, why we are we, we we are doing this? And second one is that because we are multi-stakeholder advisory group, and this is what we do in IGF. Is it is it going to draw attention to our work, or that is it more of over marketing of our activities? This is concern. And third one is that um, is it important to the public? I mean, I, I understand, I fully understand the importance of multi-stakeholder uh, for 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 the renewal purpose and UN, ITU, uh, all 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 the uh, yeah, any stakeholders that. But for the public. Did they really care about having the word in 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 the slogan of the of the conference, or we can uh, use the symbol catching? Uh, so I was thinking of instead of using stakeholder, we might say what the value that stakeholder approach, multi stakeholder approach, bring instead of instead of of using the word multi stakeholder. So this is a suggestion or a thought of thinking. Um, just I want to bring it to the table. Thank you. Peace. Peace, you're next. Okay, thank you, Chair, for the flow. Um, on the contrary to what uh, I've been around things, I still think the word multi-stakeholder is so key for us. It's what sells uh, uh, Please, you're breaking up. Maybe you could turn off your video. Just turn off your video. You're, yeah, good. Thanks. But what I want to, to put across is because bring something uh, on board to it because of the adding, you know, and I thought maybe we could have something on securing our multi stakeholder digital future, add, uh, adding the word security at the beginning, securing, securing our multi-stakeholder digital future. That's my suggestion. Thank you. OK, uh, Simeon. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would just like to underline one thing that this year is also the year where IGF has to think about its future, not only the future of uh, uh, digital world, but its own future as well. So there is a competing proposal of Global Digital Forum. IGF has to create attraction towards its relevance in continuity. And in that sense, IGF needs to have some thematic overarching theme or some title in it, which is inclusive and brings all stakeholders, especially those which are going to take a decision on uh, and review of the VISIS. So IGF is a product of VISIS. We have to also look into the criteria which CSTD is using to evaluate the progress achieved on VISIS outcomes, including the mandate of IGF. So that's why uh, we have to be cautious of this as well, that we do not have some kind of thematic area or the overarching theme, which is repulsive and uh, which is not universal. 
and uh, need to have cautious uh, approach in that sense. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you, Chair. Alan Ramirez, a MAC member. Uh, I'm sorry to disagree with most of you on uh, using multi-stakeholder into the team, and I, I want to explain my point. Uh, multi-stakeholder is a, an English word that is very common in English language, uh, but uh, for not English speakers, we uh, find difficult to translate it. For example, multi-stakeholder uh, needs three words into Spanish. Uh, as I as ask some of my colleagues from the MAG uh, how to translate non-English non, non speakers, of course, uh, and they need three words into in Ethiopian. And as I understand, in Arab, in Arab we need uh, also three words to translate multi-stakeholder. This is a uh, very I, as I as I see an, an English speaking mindset wording, uh, and I suggest that we may use some simple words like common, like uh, inclusiveness, or the diverse. Uh, this means and this is are easy to translate. And of course, um, I understand that English is the official language of the IGF, um, but if we are willing to look at uh, more engagement from everywhere uh, in the world, I think we need to have a clear, a more clear message, a clearer message. Okay, that's it, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Alan. Uh, now I have Chris. Yes, hi, sorry. I'm have trouble with my video. Here we go. Okay. Um, I, I actually, one thing I would disagree with on, on that point, I, I don't think multi-stakeholder is a straightforward or common word in English either. Um, I think it's a very much contested and um, not straightforwardly understood word in English. I don't think that's a problem though. I think, and I, I said it earlier in the chat, I think if we see this as opening a question um, about you know, what is the multi-stakeholder approach? What does that mean? How do we be multi-stakeholder? That's not a bad thing. That's actually quite a good thing for us. Um, I, I think that's also, and, and, uh, to, to address some of Abdul Rahman's concerns, I, I don't think there is a danger of sort of appearing to over egg or draw attention to the work of the MAG itself. I, I think people understand that the MAG is a program committee essentially, and um, that's Fine, that's as it should be. Um, I do. I like that the mag has that multi-stakeholder word in its title that sort of continues to draw attention to the fact that it is it is um, embodying that principle. Uh, but I don't think this is about us. This is about the IGF itself and the approach it takes. And I, it, I mean, I, I think with absolutely taking Alan's point about different languages, but I think if we sort of simply reduced to more straightforward terms like common, um, then I, we lose an opportunity that is really important right now to highlight exactly what it is that sets the IGF apart from the other approaches and models that are being discussed and touted in, in these discussions. Um, so, I, and I think that's something that we can take to a, a broader public. I mean, I, I Think we need to be realistic that the general public is not engaged with internet governance forum um, but we need to broaden continue to grow the section of the public that is because this is something that appeals and applies to to all of us these days but again i come back to if we open a question for people as to what when you say multi-stakeholder does that mean everyone has a stake everyone is involved does that mean me as well that's a question that I think we absolutely want people asking and that we can be here to answer. Yes, this is for everyone. There is a role and a stake for everyone in this discussion. And the IGF is the embodiment of that principle and has been for two decades. Uh, thanks, Chris. 
share it for me. Nesfori. Yeah, uh, hi, thank you. So so basically for me, uh, I, I was saying okay, on the on the kind on the teams we we are related uh the co-host, I feel like we are, we are lagging behind in terms of uh, the type of innovation, like the case model to, to, to be showcased in, 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 in the IGF uh, theme proposal. Like, can, can we have a, a also a theme for showcasing models in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the, the, the sector? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Bruna? Ah, uh, thank you, um, And Carol, um, just just, just re recovering some points here. I feel like multi-stakeholder is, is really, again, an inclusive term. Um, although I, I get Alan's point about it not really translating well to a couple of languages, I, I do believe that both Spanish and Portuguese have come around uh, its own translations, um, and it they all talk about um, the similar a similar thing, right? So it's a model for multiple interested parties um, that is the multi stakeholder. So this is a concept, um, even though the translation shouldn't work. Um, don't in, in some for some people, even though the translation doesn't work, it is a concept that works. And a lot of our government and foras and spaces have been repeating multi stakeholder as kind of a a, a must do word and, and uh principle to follow. So I would really like for us to to reinforce this this year because besides the inclusivity points, um it's IGF's own answer to what's going on. And what's going on, let's state it, it's um a lot of a couple of member states um trying to use the debates around the GDC to either create or duplicate some spaces or even address some of the problems they couldn't address at the IGF. So it would be very relevant for us to send out this message in a very concise and clear way for everyone to understand that it's not about the MAG, but it's about a multi multiple interested parties way of discussing policies and so on. So just wanted to maybe reply that in term in around the, the discussions on the multi stakeholder use of the word. So but because it's it's in the end of the day it's what we want and and it from the discussions that we've gathered, it might have been the main rough consensus we have achieved in the last one and a half hour of discussion. So there's some level of support, and although the the concerns are relevant and need to be addressed at some point, like just um pointing out the language factor is not going to cut it because we do have to translate the IGF to over a hundred languages, right? And it might have been the case that it haven't have never translated well, but the concept translates well. That's all. Thanks, Bruna. Karina? Karina Irarda, MAG member for the records. Um, show a few words. I would like to support the major high level issues, as Carol mentioned it, and also back to inclusion, the term and concept multi step holder. Sorry, Alan, it's okay for me. Thank you very much. Thumb up and decision. Sorry. Um, so, so thank you, Yanni. Just to reflect on what uh, uh, my colleague said on 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 uh, before Bruno and uh, the rest of the guys, uh, um, sort of just just uh, I like the, the term multi stakeholder. Even it's harder to translate it to Arabic because uh, it is it is abused term in Arabic. So that means used a lot in, in terms of project management concept. So this is uh, something that we need to work it out, but. Uh, the question that they have is, is, is assuming that we assuming that we 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 take our digital future, which is which is huge, and then we say multi 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 uh, stakeholder approach. I think that we we narrow that to to one probably one political innovation, uh, innovation which is multi stakeholder approach. Did we need to do that limit? Uh, this is question. Um, I, I understand that we need to strengthen the, yani our positioning as a multi stakeholder. Again, this is a high level slogan uh, will be used for the conference. I mean, did we need to go to that level of explanation or we should 
all of us or uh, all together or whatever other 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 simple term that represent the multi stakeholder uh, approach and 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 bring it so what i'm trying to say is just look at from the other i understand the uh, you know all the concern valid points that coming by my colleagues and i'm going to want just to have a comprehensive view of that name because that will be you know, one of the major marketing tools that we're going to uh, publish it to the whole world so we want to make sure that at least uh, all the MAG members are comfortable with, with, with views of multi-stakeholder. Thank you. Then we'll have Alan, then Chris. Thanks, Karina. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Alan Ramirez, a MAG member. I just want to uh, clarify that I, of course, uh, uh, in favor of multi-stakeholderism, uh, but I'm uh, want to uh, use a very uh, functional word into the message we sent to the world. Uh, for example, Net Mundial is one of the best examples of multi-stakeholder approach uh, in Brazil, but it's Mundial for, for something. It's Mundial because Mundial is understood as global and it is not named multi uh, net multi stakeholder which is much difficult to understand for all that's it thank you chris yeah chris thank you thank you Thank you. Um, I, just very briefly, I know, sorry, I don't mean to keep taking the floor. Um, just to the point um, Abdul Rahman was making, and I, I think it's very true that we don't want to limit ourselves. Um, and I'm repeating a little what I said in the chat here, you know, just in case um, we're not following that. But I think the, the one, apart from support for multi-stakeholder, apart from positioning the IGF, I think one of the benefits of having a, a theme built around multi-stakeholder idea is that it gives us an umbrella that can actually cover all of the, the different topics that the IGF needs to. We need to be able to, I, I, yeah, we can't, as Chengatai referenced before, um, if we look at what came out of the, the thematic feedback, um, you know, a straightforward thing would be, okay, well, let's reference AI in the theme. Because <laughs> that came through as a very strong, um, a, a strongly supported theme. I don't think that's what we want to do. I think we want to be inclusive and and cover all of the different areas that you know the IGF was designed to cover because this is such a complex landscape. Um, and I think the thing that binds it together, the things that the thing that gives us um, a, a common a commonality, is the common approach. And that common approach is a multi stakeholder approach. I just want to throw out a question. Is it more important to use the word or what the word represents? The word represents inclusive and diverse. So do we want to use the word, which is a noun, or do we want to use inclusive and diverse? What do we want? I shouldn't use that. I should say, do we want to use the word or do we want to use the meaning of the word? Um, we cannot ignore that some persons have said that in other languages, it just not does not translate. So if we're talking about multi-stakeholder and being inclusive, then it needs to be a consideration. Bruna and then Jordan. Thanks. Um, just about um, answering your question, Carol, we want to use the word as well. We want to use the concept and the word and not just the concept. The concept is something that's been very much enshrined at the IGF's origin and, and it's what we do every year. But what I guess a lot of the conversations we had for the past like almost two hours were about the multi-stakeholder model being under some sort of a risk or being some sort of a an assessment that it's trying to state that it doesn't really work or it might not work. So my point is more like if the IGF is not making a strong point about the relevance of the multi-stakeholderism, no one else will. 
It's a concept that's an old one, as Olga has noted on the chat, has been um, like written out in the Geneva Declaration, has been reinforced in many other of our like documents for the internet governance space afterwards. And it's not something new. It's something that translates to different contexts, despite not being um, translated under the same word kind of thing. So I'm just having a little bit of a trouble here um, and, and, and maybe to, to have a very kind of sincere interaction with all of you that, again, if we're not the ones reinforcing the relevance of the multi-stakeholder model, no one else will. And it's part of our mission. It's part of the leadership panel's mission. It's part of the MAG's mission and the full IGF community as well. So, and and just one other addition on that note, um, Elam, I know you you noted to Net Mundial as a as kind of Mundial instead of something else, but Net Mundial is just the name of the event, as IGF is the Internet Governance Forum, is the name of our event. If I, I'm I'm out, Jordan and I are part of the the high level executive committee for Net Mundial Plus Ten, and if you guys go on the website and take a look at the declaration, the joint statement that's kind of the the setting um, document for the upcoming Net Mundial, it mentions multi stakeholderism at least six times. And it's going to be the focus for the Net Mundial in April. So I, I'm just having a hard time. Why aren't we focusing on that as well? As it's been kind of um, this collective assessment of what all of the processes in 2024 might mean to the model. And, and we're choosing something else otherwise, because we might be losing any strategic opportunity of reinforcing a value that's so dear and so central to the IGF. And that might be a little bit of a mistake. That's all. Uh, thank you very much, Bruna. And um, just from my two cents, I think everybody's got you know valid points. Uh, I personally am a proponent of a common language, so I think we should also look at how this the multi-stakeholder concept is being referenced in the GDC, in WSIS Plus 20, and in also the other fora around us. And we shouldn't be using a term that is not used in the other fora, um, so that at least we know what we're talking about when we go to each of these places. Um, anyway, Jordan. Uh, thanks, Chengatai. Um, I was inspired to put my hand up because I disagreed with Carol, I think, with the not that multi-stakeholder internet governance is not diverse and inclusive, um, but lots of processes can be diverse and inclusive. And the key thing that multi-stakeholder internet governance adds to that is genuine decision-making for all of the participants in a given process, genuine equal footing. Uh, and that's exactly the contest that we're in, in the global governance environment this year, between that model and other models that do not provide for that that privilege the voices of states in decision-making. So I think if we're not gonna make the case for that, um, I think we've got a problem because the entire foundation of the IGF process was built out of a compromise that said that that was how internet governance would be done. Um, that is why we're all here. <laughs> it's literally why we were chosen to be representatives of the different stakeholder groups that are here. So, you know, to to not reference it, I think, would be quite problematic. And we should either reference it or not reference it at all. Uh, you know, we shouldn't try and fudge it. Um, you know, and I do think that regardless of what's in the, the peak theme, where I still think we were coming to, it felt like we were coming towards a consensus around, around doing that. Um, we do have to make sure that there is a space and a sub-theme this year for discussions around developing and improving the multi-stakeholder governance system, not just in the IGF, but for all the work that's coming out of the Summit for the Future and so on. And the status quo across the whole of internet governance uh, isn't where the system needs to be to have full participation, full legitimacy. So that's got to be a topic of discussion this year, uh, because if it isn't, we're not going to have done anything by the time of the WSIS review at the General Assembly next year. So, so I'm a firm proponent of having it in, uh, regardless of all of the problematic nature of the word and what it means and what people understand of it. Because if we aren't out there defining it and arguing for it, as some other people have said, no one else is going to be. Ta. The mayor? 
Thank you, Carol. Um, just to highlight this, that I personally don't have any kind of problem with this mostly old stockholder because I think this is a process that is uh, that needs to be that's uh, on which all member states needs to be educated, and education is a gradual process. Uh, first, you need to attract the student to yourself, and if you are outright some kind of introducing something some which do which they do not resonate that that does not resonate with them it can it is going to create some problem uh, there should be sub sub theme uh, discussing what should be the future of multi stakeholderism within the embed of igf and then gradual education of member states and other stakeholders uh, but as I, as Chengata has also referred to, it should the language outright in the level in the title of the IGF that should be inclusive, that should attract all member states to come to the IGF, listen to the MAG or or the other stakeholders speaking about solutions, speaking about approaches, uh, and that is what the mandate of IGF tells. It never tells us to develop something. The mandate of IGF, which is in the outcome document of VISIS, that is uh, to discuss, to advise, to facilitate, things like that. So we have to be constructive in formulation of uh, the overarching theme and something which resonates with everybody. Thank you. Maria Del Common. Thank you. Uh, Carmen Denis, MAC member, uh, in my own opinion. I agree to include the word uh, multi stakeholder. Remember, uh, we need to remember that the, the that word, the multi stakeholder, is the key and the strength of, of, of that all we know that internet. Um, like and uh, now we know one uh, like a uh, one internet, and it is the the pillar of the conversation and consensus in a space such as ICANN and the and the other rares on the communities. Uh, this learning uh, will allow or maybe will allow the construction of the digital future with few pillars giving voice to the inclusivity and diversity of the stakeholders. Thanks. Uh, Lisa, mm -hmm. and then we'll try to um, wrap up and make a decision. Alyssa? Can you read my mind? That was exactly what I was wanting to suggest, <laughs> um, because I, I feel we're we're walking a bit in circles, and um, so we, I think we should try to trim down the amount of suggestions that we have. And um, um, I think last year we um, um, the the Japanese they like had a discussion amongst themselves, and 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 um, in the end came up with one or two suggestions, um, hearing all the debates. And I think that's where we need to be going and move on with the agenda. Thanks. Thank you, Alyssa. That's exactly where we're going to go. So looking at um, the eight suggestions that we have here, we want to select our best three and give those to the host country, to Malova, and come back with um, some final options for us. So I think the best thing to do is to let's talk about what we want to eliminate from the list. Let's start at the bottom one, eight. Digital food, no, what? Digital yeah, for good. Digital for good, the multi-stakeholder contribution. How are we going to do this by show of hands? Well, um, let's try it this way first. Who wants to keep number eight? <laughs> okay. Digital for good. 
you don't no, no it's just a no, general no. each time for each, each one time. if for each yeah. one we're going to say in or out okay yeah how many want to keep it just a feel of the room it's not actually a vote vote yeah that's what I thought as well. It's very, very similar for AI for good. We should be in a trade okay, so, Yeah, oh, true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so move that one out. The next one, one digital future, multi-stakeholders. Just say, okay, so no, there's, there's, there's no appetite for that one. Okay, <laughs> six, unleashing or connecting or safeguarding or encouraging or promoting or securing the digital commons, multi-stakeholder governance for the future. No, okay, cut that out. <laughs> Unleashing our multi-stakeholder digital future and we could replace that unleashing with unlocking or unpacking. So don't get caught up with the word unleashing. Well, we can delete number five since it's similar to one and two. Okay, five is also similar to four. Okay, so unleashing or unpacking or unlocking our digital future, multi-stakeholder, or the or a multi-stakeholder approach. Pardon? The, the multi-stakeholder approach. So we want to put that in there. Anybody for that? Anybody in the in the chat? No? We have two two thumbs up, three thumbs up. Actually four thumbs up. <laughs> 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 okay, um, I think we're going to end up with nothing, but let's, let's continue. So that's a, 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 a line through. Okay, so so you don't confuse yourselves. Don't not vote because that's not the one you want. Okay, we're trying to come up with three. Okay, we, we're trying to come up with three. Number four is a good one. I think so. So having said that, I'm yeah. going to put four to you again. Otherwise, we won't end up with three because we're, we're at number four. So are you saying if we take out number four, then we end all discussions, one, two, and three goes? Mike. Just like to put for the consideration of the Meg, if uh, the word solutions will be better because the job of uh, IGF is to provide advice and uh, discuss ideas. I mean, what solutions. we can do is put the unleashing and unpacking building and unlocking, and then they can go and then that covers everything, right? Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm saying about approach, the word approach. You want to change approach to what? No, no, I'm just putting for the consideration of MEG. They have to consider it. If multi stakeholder solutions, is uh, yeah, because this is uh, solution or approach. Okay, so okay, I, I, I start. So are we saying that we want to put in brackets behind unleashing the words unpacking, unlocking, and then in brackets behind solutions, um, behind will we put a solutions and and um, approach? This number four still, yeah. number four still. Right. So I think in, for the for the, the and four, then solutions or approach. So I think now we need to read all the fours, and four for four. Oh, it's not four. It's just uh, if we continue omitting, maybe we'll omit all the options. That's what I'm saying. So <laughs> we at this stage we're not trying to omit all options. We're coming up with three. So don't be afraid to raise your hand for something that is not your number one. Okay, Lito. I will um, insist or propose that we leave unpacking, building, unlocking. So for the for the, I mean the word building, for me is important. Let's leave number four and we'll come back to it. Let's go to number three. 
Appetite for number three, achieving a multi-stakeholder or common digital future. I'm watching online. Anybody? Um, any plus ones online, please? For number three. So we're seeing quite a few hands in here in the room. Um, please, please indicate online quickly a plus one or a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Okay, so the the um, on site there are quite a few for it, and there looks like a few. Alhasha, you can't vote twice in there. <laughs> Yes, and there's some online. So number three is a is a stay. Number three is a stay. Let's go to number two. Shaping our digital future, evolving multi multi stakeholder governance. Shaping our digital future, evolving multi stakeholder governance. Okay, it's, it's not working for people online. This is for number two. Okay, no, so that's a no. Okay, so see there, we now have three. Yep, yep. clap. <laughs> Carol, I go ahead. Um, Thanks. So. Uh, uh, so sorry, I, I, was, not, I wasn't oh. sure whether now was the time. I, I was just going to point out to the unleashing, I think um, a lot of us have mentioned that they were not comfortable with the word unleashing because of its kind of negative um, um, meaning. So perhaps we can also take unleashing out of the uh, out of the pool and, and just go with the approach that was discussed, unpacking either unpacking, building or unlocking. And also that um, suggestion number one was also a standalone suggestion without the unpacking, building, and unlocking um, as per our discussion so far. So we have bundled them up, but I, I, from what I gather, there were two different um, suggestions. One, just our multi-stakeholder digital future, and the other one would be the either one of the three words plus our multi-stakeholder digital future. Bruno, we, we're leaving the options in. Um, just like we did with the other ones. Some people liked unleashing, some didn't. So just like some people like multi-stakeholders, some people don't. We just don't want to eliminate at 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 this point. So we can leave the unleashing um, in there as well. So are you saying that one and three looking very similar? No, what I'm saying is that number one was a suggestion without the unpacking, building, and unlocking. And um, maybe we're still discussing four suggestions instead of just three, because um, I know Chingatai, I see your reaction, but but I also, it's just that it was part of the discussion, right? We were also addressing at some point just the our multi-stakeholder digital future, that's all. And, and also um, the multi-stakeholder approach doesn't say a lot to me, like, um, I would perhaps just go with the multi-stakeholder approach or um, or solutions and or, or just with the unleashing um, part of the sentence. I I rather think it's too, it's a little bit too long. I'm, I don't know. Thank you, Bruna. Um, but we just want to keep in mind that these are just um, the suggestions and the host country will come back with options for us to um, choose. So we want to leave the different description, de descriptive words in there. And um, Justin will have the last word and we need to move on. We are way off schedule. And then Justin. Thank you, Chair. Um, actually, uh, well, can we modify the third one with uh, multi-stakeholder solutions for our digital future? Because it's almost similar. Thank you. 
Justin? Um, thank you. Just real quick. I, the word unpacking is just, I, I'm not sure exactly what that means in this context. I, I mean, I think I take the point on unleashing. Um, I think unlocking building makes sense, but unpacking just to me seems a little weird connotation in this context. And I just also want to say, I thought that some of the discussions around the risks um, and there was the word safeguarding, like safeguarding our multi-stakeholder digital future, safeguarding our digital future, I thought was um, a helpful framing um, that was positive, but also addressed some of that. But um, I think I think mainly I just would encourage not to do unpacking. Thank you. Okay, I see you, Al Haji. So what I what I'm going to suggest is just below number three, um, just put considerations terms for considerations. Um, so it's not a number four, just terms uh, for consideration are uh, things like risk. Uh, not don't don't put it as part of three. Just leave it as unbulleted, and we could um, just terms for consideration, risk. Um, what was the other one? Risk. Uh, just give us the, the list again, Justin. And if anybody else wants to give um, safeguarding, I, I just suggested safeguarding. I thought risk, not not risks. I just when we're talking about unpacking or building or unlocking, I thought safeguarding our digital future um, was was a, a term that was was interesting and folks mm -hmm. have um, advocated for that. Um, but I would also suggest, um, I guess, if if we're terms for consideration, maybe not to consider. <laughs> unleashing and unpacking as they either have a negative <laughs> no, context uh -huh. or kind of uh I, I don't know what unpacking means in the terms of our digital future it just okay. it doesn't resonate i think in the way we would want it to really. okay uh, Haji. thank thank you very much um i think the word building is is the most appropriate there because when you are building you are trying to do something for the future Okay, when you start to build something it's not complete so is this something for the future and i think building is uh, is is good and also um, the solutions. When you look at solutions also, you are also looking for safeguarding something. You are also taking a um, look at risk as well. So those two words, building and then also solutions at the end, I think those, those two words are really very appropriate. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, the Really the last two, okay. Final, final, last two, are Jordan and Zhao, and then we're gonna hand over to the host country. Uh, thanks, yeah. Um, I just wanted to confirm the process of what happens next. So I think there's some strong common themes and some strong common language in these proposals. So I just wanna clarify what you said before, Carol. Will it be that um, the host country will take these inputs, have a mull about them, maybe do some playing around, and we'll come back and propose something, yes. but that the mag in the end decides oh, what the theme is? Well. Yeah. Right, okay, just just double checking that, thank you. Now? I agree with uh, building the third three, building digital futures, the multi-stakeholder solutions. I think it's constructive and bring a kind of balance that could uh, be very encouraging people to engage. Thank you. Uh, so first of all, thank you. Thank you very much for this valuable discussion valuable comments uh, yeah, and, uh we listen to all the options that you are put in place and and, and hey, I'm, I'm very happy that we come up to uh, to these three options um, if you allow me because we have a technical community uh, we promised them to come back to them today by all the options uh, and if you allow me to give some time to them and come back tomorrow morning with with a couple of options uh, uh, for your kind consideration in the mag uh, before you make a decision on on, on this matter yeah. Thank you. This, is, this part is always the exciting part, <laughs> getting to the theme. So we're now moving to, oof, we are so off today. Um, <clears throat> Sub-themes. Yeah. Sub well, I think we had decided we, we need to make Before we look at sub-themes, we have to decide 
Um, are we going to have sub themes? We're going to have um, three sub, five subs. Since I'm going to odd numbers, seven subs. <laughs> so um, we need to make a decision on that. Um, I think Chris yesterday um, wanted us to think about, and Chris, you could correct me. We don't want to just hack things off to say that we have a good number. We want to have a reasonable approach to selecting the um, subtitles or sub themes, but also keeping in mind the feedback that we got that it was too much. So we have to find a balance. Okay, good. Um, Lito? So on the floor now is how many? Thank you. I will say between three and five. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just wanted to repeat the comment from uh, yesterday I made. I think this question of, is it too much? Some of that is derived from all the things that get added in additional in addition to the sub themes. So I think that just one thing with sub themes, whether we agree to three, four, five, six, seven, whatever, that that is kind of how we're trying to focus our work and that uh, main sessions, I think high level dialogues, uh, other events kind of kind of align with that, that we don't just like, you know, tie ourselves to certain tracks for the workshops, but then on everything, the other two thirds of the agenda is just, you know, kind of wide open. I think that's where it gets to be uh, too much. So if this is the kind of way we're going to organize our work, then I think we should try to have discipline to carry that through all the work. Thank you. Online. Okay, Marcus. Oh. You're Marcus Coma speaking. I would call myself IGF Dinosaur. Uh, last year, I think definitely the sub-themes were too confusing. There were far too many, and I think everybody got lost. And the question is... Yes, sorry. Well, all, what I'm saying that last year, it was really confusing with so many themes and most people got lost. And the question is, on one hand, the number of themes, on the other hand, also the level of uh, granularity. And the higher level of abstraction they are, the easier it is to fit sub uh, topics under them. And very first Mac, at the very first IGF, the Mac then came up with four themes, and they were very high level of abstraction: access, security, openness, and diversity. And under these umbrellas, you could fit anything in that actually is concerned with the community. So this is my sort of historical of what actually works. Yeah. Chris, are you able yeah. to? Okay, yes, sorry, ahead. I didn't couldn't hear you before when um, you came in. Um, yeah, no, I, I think, uh, well, you certainly didn't misrepresent what I was saying, Carol. I think sort of hacking at the number just to get to a certain number is not um, not the way to go. But I think we do have an opportunity for a bit of a change of direction here after two years of essentially um, trying to mirror the, gen the, the global digital compact and the themes there. Um, I think that wouldn't be a useful way to go this year. And that sort of frees us up a little to try something different. Um, and I think the points that, well, the points that Marcus was making actually were a little, what I was going to say, maybe we we need to move away from sort of specific ideas like AI and emerging technologies and uh, to to more sort of broader themes that can can capture um, a bit more. And I think Jordan in the chat, going back a bit, had had some ideas for um, four different themes or uh, um, and he can speak to this, but I, I think they were um, a good way that we might look at structuring it, um, looking sort of at um, 
I don't actually have it here in front of me, but um, looking at some different themes that are not necessarily bound to really specific topics, but more to thematic areas of concern or interest. Um, so yeah, that, I think that's a good way to go and for us to explore that and get a bit creative. Okay, I'm just going to ask the Secretariat if they can find the, that's quite a lot though, the listing from the internet we want, the the themes in there and, and put that up. Um, Bruna? Thanks, Carol. Um, yeah. So maybe just reacting to the internet we want thing, I I would just be a bit, I mean, obviously we can promote some sort of similarity or coordination, but I would just be a bit wary of connecting um, our work directly with theirs because it wasn't something that necessarily was developed based on a on a bottom-up kind of approach, right, to the, to the topics they list there. But just a small comment on that. I just wanted to offer a reaction to some of the host country proposals um, and Jordan's as well. Um, I like a couple of the themes um, highlighted here, like things such as leading towards unity is something that would be really key as an overarching theme for addressing topics like fragmentation or like um, basic um, core technical aspects of the internet or anything related to that. Um, I do like Karina's suggestion back then in, in the, the conversation we had recently about limiting the risks um, and unleashing the potentials. This is something that um, we have tried to, to bring in last year on the AI discussion, right? Because um, a lot of us folks, including myself on the AI debates, have highlighted that um, it's important for the IGF to not be just simply positive about um, the, the new technology inventions or innovations, but also to bring in some more critical approach and, and, and like discussions into this space. So I would be, I'm also supporting on the limiting the risks and unleashing the potentials on that. Um, just um, perhaps a, a word of caution for us to not over-focus on AI again, because besides the GDC, there was another point of um, feedback that was provided on the taking stock um, consultation as well that we did over focus on AI um, last year. And that's another thing that keeps um, being brought into my mind. And um, in each, in, in both sets of proposals, either um, Jordan's or um, the host country one, I still feel, um, I still miss something about human rights. Um, I do believe that we need to find a way of, of doing an equation of bringing up the discussions on human rights. I don't know whether we need to name them. They name them as an overarching um, one of the subtopics for this year. But I I do believe that um, for stakeholders such as the one I come from, it, it is a relevant discussion and could be also a strategic mistake to not mention them up um, in the IGF um, list of sub teams for twenty twenty four. That's all. Thanks. Okay. Um. Okay, Sumer. So Thank you, Carol. Uh, I will just restrict my answer to the question. It was about number of themes. Um, just an interesting uh, fact that in, since we are also focusing on communications this time, the theory of communications says the principle of three is the most effective, engaging, and uh, it has more impact in terms of uh, you know, it, creating attraction and involvement of audience. So maybe we need to stick with this principle of three. And um, I, I think that most of the forums, they, they try to limit their number of uh, these uh, uh, thematic issues so that the, the stakeholders or participants, they can engage in all events uh, with full uh, kind of participation. Thank you. Many and then Winnie. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Asiado, MAG member. I would like to second the idea of um, short list of, of themes, three and maximum four, if we want to discuss um, process that cannot be included in those three. Um, and, and I'd like to bring up something that was mentioned yesterday uh, from, from the community. We have a set of issues that are vertical and that 
are more singular focused. And I think that it is important that we um that we that we go into um putting together a short list of issues that we can that are easily communicable, that we can easily say this is what the IGF will discuss this year. And then we have on the other side our horizontal issues which give more a bit of a context of what those vertical themes are targeting. Uh, that can be um, multi-stakeholder governance, that can be business models, that can be um, human rights. So uh, to, to that point, I think that it's it's a good approach to have those singular focus vertical themes that at the same time align with the list of horizontal, let's say, context um, focused ones so that we can effectively say, this is what IGF is going to talk about this year when we are doing our outreach, when we're doing our, yeah, with our counterparts, especially also from the business perspective, uh, that we have this clarity and, and focus. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I thought someone else was in the list before me. Um, I just wanted to, if you're okay, Carol, with us sort of segueing from the number of sub themes to what might be in them. Um, uh, I was trying to come up with a few that I put in the chat, which were uh, kind of like there's this positive story about what the tech and the internet can offer that we've talked about. There's the need to deal with the challenges that it gives rise to, which I think we've talked about as well. Um, there's this transversal or horizontal theme about actually improving the governance system altogether. Um, uh, there's been a bit of um, chatter in the circles I've been about the sort of human rights aspects um, and also the sort of leading for unity or unity for peace and sustainability seem to be some global challenges that people want to see the internet governance system tackling. Um, and none of those, I, I've thought about these as themes that can give a bit of a kind of political focus to the event but that don't exclude any of the specific topic suggestions that people might want to raise so obviously ai fits within pretty easily within um, harnessing innovation and it actually fits within managing risks um so i i hadn't had the sense um that we should go so far as to drill right down into topics. I think if we tried to say the IGF should only deal with a number of topics, we'd probably get overwhelmed with opposition from people who were saying, well, why doesn't my topic fit in this year? Um, but the themes can provide a bit of a, a, a sort of focus for us, I think. So that was the genesis of those suggestions from me. Thank you, um, Winnie, and then Olga. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. And uh, Winnie here from Nairobi, Kenya. Um, I just wanted to mention that one thing I realized, uh, even as we we're discussing about the different uh, adjectives or uh, words that we can give uh, the themes, uh, as we mentioned yesterday, we we're talking about our story, our journey. And I think one thing we can do, even as part of the themes that we're discussing for this year, um, could be our journey, our journey as IGF. Um, and, and how has it been? Just seeing that journey would really be important for us to be able to understand where we're, we're going. I don't know. Um, uh, if this this is something that we can look at and uh, think about like the journey of IGF and also in our storytelling as part of our storytelling, uh, that should be part also captured in the themes that we have. Um, thank you, that's, that's something we should keep in mind um as we come to some conclusions go ahead olga justin and sorry i can't pronounce your name <laughs> uh, i actually like this idea to focus not on uh, thematic issues uh, this year but uh, more like uh, from which perspective we want to approach uh, this issue so for example uh, whether this is uh, something positive in terms of innovation whether this is something about balancing the risks 
Uh, so I really like this uh, uh, structure that uh, uh, Jordan proposed, but uh, I was also thinking that uh, if we want uh, to somehow uh, limit the number of facts uh, that we have, potentially, potentially we could, uh, let's say, uh, manage harnessing innovation and managing risks. Uh, it's uh, really valuable to live uh, maintaining uh, peace and stability. Uh, human rights, I think, is something which should be there and also Maybe the one about uh, multi-stakeholder governance can be something uh, broader, uh, more like uh, digital governance and uh, cooperation. So we could, uh, let's say, have uh, four tracks uh, that way. And also, I think this is uh, a good idea to start it from the web in a way that uh, we want uh, this, uh, the sessions which are proposed to be uh, action-oriented, uh, not just, uh, you know, it's uh, like an unbodied uh, uh, track, but uh, something which uh, kind of pushes uh, uh, submitters to to think about uh, what can be what can be the action points uh, out of their sessions. Um, so yeah, that would be it. Thank you, Olga, Justin. Um, thank you. Yeah, just trying to think through the conversation we just had about the overall theme and seeing if there's a way to tie it into some kind of way, elegant way. I, I think if we're talking about, you know, our shared or our multi-stakeholder digital future, then maybe in the sub-themes, there is a way to tie it to a digital future. Mm -hmm. And so we just talked about some of these uh, action verbs, but, you know, if we had an overall, our, um, you know, shared digital future as the overall theme, and then underneath that, we could building our digital future safeguarding our digital future, empowering our digital future. I think it can have a way of being broad enough to capture things like, you know, AI and emerging technologies and access and human rights underneath those concepts uh, that we kind of talked about in the overall theme uh, and might, you know, kind of connect the two. Um, let's... Secretary, did you capture that? Um... Fourth suggestion, Justin will go over it again. Um, yeah, I was as as maybe three themes. It was building our digital future, safeguarding our digital future, and empowering our digital future. But, but those are just random thoughts I just had here. So <laughs> welcome others. Shafiq? Good morning. Uh, as an observer, uh, reflecting on the theme and the digital uh, future, uh, based on my experience working in, in this region, and to achieve this digital future, we need to tackle two critical matters or issues, connectivity and bridging the digital divide. Uh, in this region, a lot of countries and communities are still lag behind. Uh, why this is important at this moment? Because Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, is in the center of this region. And as Mr. Abdurrahman said yesterday, one of the reasons to have the IGF is here is to get the region to come to Riyadh and share and uh, take the knowledge. So doing or bridging the, the digital uh, uh, or the connectivity or bridge, uh, bridging the digital cab is not only about technology. It's about, and I will use your own word, unlocking human potential and digital future. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus, then Bruna. Just a word of clarification. I did mention the 2006 themes, but I did not suggest there should be themes for the 2024. They were just an example of a good selection of high-level themes which allowed to group topics underneath. Thank you. Um, Thank you, thanks. Bruna. Thanks, Carol. Um, 
just about the topics, I feel like I'm I'm more supportive of the direction we were going on Jordan's suggestions. And and mostly because um I like the points brought up by Justin, but I do think that it's gonna be a little bit of a nightmare for us to sort out um panel workshop submissions on these three topics. Um and, and also for um not just for us, but for, for the community as well to understand whether my discussion about AI and harms is something that builds our future or safeguards our future. So it's it's I just find them um a little too high level for us to be able to sort out um workshop submissions in that sense. So I would maybe be more prone into going into the four kind of sub themes that Jordan was going um towards um and, and in that sense I I think I think I would maybe bundle up um one and two because can we just go get the screen a little bit lower because I, I do think that um better managing of risks is part of the debate that he suggested on number one so we can do harnessing innovation and better managing risks for something potential of digital so that can be all bundled up and it's 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 a lot of the similar discussions in that sense. But that would be just it. Like I feel like we also need to be um wary of us while sorting out the, the workshop submissions and for community as well when they when they submit them. Because the more high level we go, the harder it will be for, for us to to do the workshop selection. And we might even need to do the kind of a one pager for each of those topics, again, to explain that here's where technical aspects of AI or LLMs come in, and here's where um, protocols might come in. So just, just pointing that out, because I'm assuming that May is going to be a complicated month for all of us. Um. Uh, so I was thinking about um, the whole world when we talk about our digital future, and it, it's very clear that world is different stages. If you look to the global south, it's different than we go to, to the north uh, side of the, of the world. So I was thinking about what we, if we come with a little bit innovative, uh, non-technical themes. For example, uh, there is a lot of countries, a lot of people need to have to, to get inspired, so like a theme of inspiration. Anything that fit on the inspiration side can be there. We we'll, we look to this another theme about about safeguarding. Anything that came with the protection and safe could be under that theme, and and we might look to theme for empower, for example. Uh, that, so that thinking of themes are from not from technical point of view, but from a sort of building block for the futures and based on what people need from different countries and from different areas. And, and I propose to, to have some, some thinking about that. Quasi, I'm not sure if that's pronounced right. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, and Mike, uh, Mike, Mike. Sure. Thank you, Chairman, and my capacity as an observer. Uh, looking at the uh, three suggestions, um, I would see that the first suggestion is too broad. Actually, uh, may not uh, may not create a relevance to internet governance, but rather to, to any topic. Uh, the second suggestion and the third suggestion are more relative to uh, internet governance. Uh, we want to put topics that is related to to. Uh, we want to put themes that is related to internet governance and at least reflects some of our priorities and concerns in the region since the IGF is coming to uh, our part of the world. So really, uh, uh, the first suggestion, especially like if I see two, three, or four, this is too general to uh, relate it to only uh, to internet governance, can be related to any uh, uh, matter or subject. So really, uh, building on what uh, Anjir Abdurrahman just mentioned, I would support even going to the second or the third uh, suggestion, rather than the two broad, any uh, topic suggestion, which is uh, suggestion number one. Thank you. Mayor? Thank you, Carol. Um, maybe uh, our colleague from DESA would also like to comment on this because 
uh, if IGF has to remain relevant, it has to be complementary to the other processes like the GDC process. It is seeking to build or crystallize some principles for our digital future. And uh, two main principles which are cross-cutting uh, in that regard are the equitable digital transformation, the principle of equity to be precise, and the other is common but differentiated responsibilities in the context of safety and security of ICTs and internet as well. So um, um, I really like the suggestion to have some non-technical uh, sub-theme, uh, which also caters to the needs of both the haves and have-nots. Digital divide is a fact, it exists. There are more than 2.6 billion people which are not online yet. So maybe equity, maybe weaved in, in some sub theme. And one suggestion could be to have some equitable digital transformation or uh, empowering an equitable digital future, something like that. Thank you. I don't know if a colleague from DESA would want to. Yeah, um, yeah, Wai Min Guok, you and DESA. So on, on the... Um... On the point that we just heard about connecting to the GDC, I believe will be challenging uh, because we will not be able to prejudge the final text in the GDC, although some of us in different contexts may know where the general directions are. Um, the timeline-wise, the GDC that is uh, the plan for by the COFAC to have uh, uh, to have a uh, generally agreed text in around June or July, uh, but the final text will still be adopted along with the pack of the future um, at the summit of the future in September during the summit itself. Um, so, and having said that, uh, as is now, the GDC will cover uh, a few areas and also several principles. Um, the, the areas that some of you may be aware of uh, from connectivity to capacity building, to DPI, to decent work, human rights online, digital trust, safety, information integrity, data governance, and AI governance. So it's, it's kind of like a laundry list. So it'll be challenging uh, for that. So adding my own personal view, uh, I, I liked the, the suggestion uh, by the host uh, in terms of having a broader, but at the same time uh, speaking, to the needs um, of those um, those uh, general populations, especially the vulnerable groups. Thank you. Okay, um, I think we strayed a bit. Bruna, I, I see your hand. We were first deciding on the numbers. So it looks like it's gonna be three to five. And um, so I just wanted to clear that. And now we've moved on to try and determine what those three to five are. Go ahead, Bruna. Thanks. Um... It's just a hard time, again, hard time of muting here. Just um, on the topics once more, I feel like I'm a little bit um, lost strategy-wise because we've started the morning perhaps discussing, um, Abdurrahman, your idea of having track leaders or some level of reporting from the tracks that will be provided to the broader IGF. And the issue is that, um, again, as I said before, like, the more high level we'll go, the more confusion we might bring into the space and the more confusion we might bring into anyone that's expecting for the IGF to bring in some kind of um, topic um, specific reporting. And, and just as a reminder as well, like we have also been shaping the messages around some of the sub themes. So um, I, I keep asking myself, like, where will the discussions on internet fragmentation fit in, in a much higher level kind of list? Or will, we, will the discussions about, let's say, global equity, a multi-stakeholder model, fragmentation of processes, and all of that should fit in that? Um, I like the, 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 the kind of the exercise of us 
go in a bit more high level this year. I really like and enjoy. I think the IGF um, needs to show that it's also kind of like more modern in the way of thinking through stuff. And just like having some themes, I would say accessibility might not really work because we know some workshops, they get out of this kind of baskets. But at the same time, I would just like to reinforce the 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 point about confusion um, to the broader community that, that it would be very hard for them to submit anything if we don't um, come up with very clear or like somehow clearish um, lines between the themes. Because what I'm seeing here is that um, we might need to work on sub themes of sub themes, um, just so community understands where are they going to 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 submit something. And and just to point out um, two of the outcomes, right? Um, because this is not just for us, it's for community to submit some things. And the framing of the sub themes has also been the framing of the IGF messages. So um, some more clarity here would be more than welcome for, for everyone that's um, willing to engage. That is it. I just want to pose a question. I'm not suggesting that we do it. Do we want to look at the, what was it, 11 themes and see if they fit or not? Like, for example, I, I'm thinking that, um, and I could be wrong, fragmentation would fall under um, whole and open. That's just my thought. It may also fall under something else. So I think... Um, giving the broader topic may allow persons to um, choose one of these and further expand whatever their expertise is within the concept of whole and open. I'm, I'm just using, I'm not saying that we're using um, suggestion to, it's just a concept. So the workshop um, proposals or can fit in to one of those categories that we choose. I really think that we should um, go outside the box or the envelope and think about giving um, topics that are meaningful to persons. Um, if I if somebody comes and says to me, "Oh, we have to talk, we have to think about internet fragmentation," I need somebody on the side of me to tell me, "What are you talking about?" as opposed to having somebody say open and free. I, I understand open and free. So you have a chance to mix the two. Okay, open and free means, is talking about fragmentation. Um, talking about rights respecting is talking about taking a human-centric approach to the internet. So um, I think we, we can look and see whether we are capturing. And if we aren't capturing, then what do we need to add in order to capture? So I'm just throwing that out there. Um, lunch is at 12.30, we were late yesterday. So we're going to give this another seven minutes. So thank you. I was thinking about about the model that I propose in terms of inspire, empower, or or even solve. Uh, and usually that is, is is a pure program management. So in program management, usually we collect all similar projects in one place. In this case, what we can do is having a program and 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 agreeing on what going in each program. For example, we talk about internet fragmentation. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that we need less fragmentation. So this is this is clearly will fall in, in the empowerment uh, uh, component. AI, for example, ethics of AI, or or uh, it might be on the safeguard, or might be on on uh, on a solve program, or whatever theme that we can put on. It's it's all about us. But having something that it is easy to understand, for like inspire, will enable even the participant to have a journey for inspiration. So we can ha have all the uh, all the sub theme list, and then all the uh, uh, presentations or, or um, uh, sessions on that theme structured in a way that enable the visitors to have a li little bit clearer journey. If they are, want to inspire, or they want to go to solve uh, component, they think that the world does not solve it yet. Or if you want to go to pro program for empowerment, or, or whatever you want to do, that that will that's the idea of program management. 
component of 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 current uh, thing and i think that will make, make it easier for the for the for the audience uh, and easier even in the communication side if we want to have very strong communication uh, about igf okay so we're going to take octavia and then break for lunch please and then come back okay go ahead octavia Yeah, can you hear? We can't hear you. I'm back. I'm okay. Good. Yes. Okay, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> um, I just wanted to pitch in a couple of things. Um. I, I think this is a, a, a really important moment and an important time for us to discuss this in the sense that I think there are some differences that we need to address. Um, for me, for instance, being inspirational has to do with security um, and inspiring you know, human rights in implementation, inspiring um, a, a way of using artificial intelligence that is future focused. And so for me, if you like using uh, an analogy from from my own cultural context, it becomes the spice. It It's not the meal itself. And what I think we need to look at when we look at these sub themes are we can spice them and we can go to our communities respect uh, fully and 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 ask them to, and and assist with this understanding of what does it mean? Because Abdurrahman, you're absolutely right. <laughs> there is no uh, assuming that you want something uh, fragmented uh, or you know not fragmented uh, is such a good point to make um, because we can't assume. Um, there's a punk rocker that said many years ago that when you assume. Um, you make a little bit of an idiot out of both me and you. And so I think leaving things perhaps even more simpler could be the way forward. And I want to come back to Marcus's, the first initial four. I don't know, maybe it is the time to go back, um, reflect on those and see how far we've come and use this moment and have just those four. Uh, I think eight is too much. I think five is the max. And I think we somehow need to have them overarching, but not encroaching so people can. I would like, I've participated so many times in the IGF and I, I would love to at least see um, a contribution that I would put forth uh, fit into one or two sub themes. Um, and I understand that that's maybe not what the conversation has reflected so far and MAG colleagues and, and other colleagues present, please chime in. Um, but I think it is important that when I bring a talk on, you know, resilience and risk in terms of human rights, that I have at least two places where I can focus that talk into or presentation or workshop. Um, I hope that was clear. Um, and, and yeah, thank you for providing me with the space and unmuting me. Thank you, Octavia. I like that. Um, the spice is not the meal. Uh, I think that's right, but you could correct me. So we're going to have some nice spicy lunch and then we're going to come back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Very good discussions. Very good discussions. Thank you.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you had a good lunch. I think it's time that we start the afternoon session. Half an hour more on things. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. <laughs> okay, um, I'll just go to it. Okay, welcome back, everybody. So we're going to give half hour, 30 minutes to the um, completing the themes, or sub themes, sorry. Um, so far, I think we have three um, suggestions. Um, so we'll see if we have uh, maybe a fourth one um, with four ideas underneath it. What we're gonna to do tonight for, I suppose a little bit of homework for you or to make people feel more comfortable is that we're going to um, create a table or matrix for you um, so that you could try to check off how the 11 um, thematic inputs we got, how they fit in to our um suggested themes and that i hope will give some people comfort to see where the thematic inputs will fall into so we're going to go back to um so let's just recap the the three themes the three suggest um suggestions we have so far the first one is um hold and open universal and inclusive, free-flowing and trustworthy, safe and secure, and rights respecting. The second one is building our digital future, safeguarding our digital future, empowering our digital future. The third one is harnessing innovation and potential of digital, better managing risks, um, unity for peace and sustainability, improving multi-stakeholder governance, human rights and digital, and in the digital universe. Anybody has a, a fourth one that they want to suggest or fifth? I know people were putting things in the chat, but if you can um, provide. Okay. Yeah. Any hands? No hands? No? It's lunchtime. You had too many desserts, did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So go ahead, Alyssa. I, are you requesting to have like a fourth full set of suggestions? Because it's not that weird if we don't have a new full set, right? Okay. Yeah. But I don't know if somebody has a fourth. And since nobody is responding, then let's look at, okay, Ahashi, go ahead. Thank you. I was just thinking about the um, uh, the legal aspect of, uh, of of it as well. So maybe I was thinking about legal and uh, regulatory frameworks. Because it's quite important. Also, we think about the, the the regulations. We also think about the legal frameworks across the across the world, and I think that's where we 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 need members of parliament, uh, because at the end of the day, all the laws will be on their desk to decide. So I think it's quite important the fact that now we have a, um, a parliamentary track, and as well as a request to have um, also another track for judges. I think it's quite important that we have some legal and regulatory frameworks as well. Just, just a suggestion. This is what, what I would um, 
ask you, if I'm doing safeguarding our digital future, wouldn't regulation be part of safeguarding? That's a question for you to think. It, it, it could be um, to, to some extent, um, because here the, the important point I'm trying to raise here is about the need um, uh, to provide um, uh, consistency across, um, uh, because we all have different um, legal frameworks. Um, uh, so the safeguarding, uh, for me, I'm thinking about the protection um, in terms of cybersecurity, um, um, et cetera, et cetera. That's what I'm thinking. But if we can fit it in there also, no, you know, it's, 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 quite, it's quite okay with me. I think the matrix that um, Celine is putting together for us will help us to feel comfortable. You can go home tonight and mull over it to see, okay, so, oh, she's really quick. <laughs> so you can just put a little X in that spot that is say, does it cover it, does it not? And you can, you can put some level of comfort to yourselves. This is something we can also put within the, um, when we are, calling for for um, workshops. We can give people an idea of, of where we're heading with this so it's not a guessing game. Um, so I think something like this will be, be helpful. And um, if we, we stick to the history and we, we talk about the history of, of the IGF and looking back at what we did, maybe what we did before we could cycle back around and 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 it's still good. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, sorry, Bruna and then Chris. Um, thanks. Thank you, Carol. Um, I'm not able to turn my video on, but I could unmute this time. So thanks a lot for the for the help here. But um, just on the topics, I think um, it's still somehow confusing. I don't. I mean, I don't necessarily understand why are we going into this exercise when it perhaps should be um kind of a mag decision first on whether we're doing the sub teams as a high level under a high level approach or something more specific like i do feel like we're pending a decision um ahead of anything are we going high level are we going theme specific that's um perhaps the first question we might need to answer and um, the other point is about um, regulatory aspects. Um, regulation is one of the cross-cutting themes, um, and it has always been, right? I don't think we need to necessarily convey or, or reproduce the need to discuss regulations in any of that, because it, it, it can take on um, many different interpretations, whether it's for safeguarding something, for ensuring something happens, or for building a certain future. But I'm also being worried that we're already looking at things from one of the perspectives that has been that has been suggested and not all of that. So since it's a little confusing, my request is for us to first um, perhaps decide on if we're going high level or theme specific, because um, otherwise it's going to be a I feel like it's going to be a different and, and complicated discussion. The other topic is that um, just like last year it would be important for us to discuss whether we want some kind of overarching slash um, transversal discussions to address some of our debates. Um, last year was gender and human rights as kind of a general approach for the MAG while approving workshops and things like that. So it would be important for us to have a discussion on that too. Okay, so um, Chris, before I go to, to you, um, I'm a bit confused, Bruno, because that's how I started out the this session to say whether or not somebody, if you had a different suggestion. So far, everybody, well, majority seems to be going towards this approach where we have um, sub themes that can take in the horizontal or it could be vertical. I think when you have, when you laid out like this, a workshop could decide, am I gonna take this as a horizontal and look at all of my, um, the somatic inputs, or am I going to um, take it vertical and only take one? So I, I'm confused when you say that we didn't decide. 
And um, I'm going to leave it there and go to Chris. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I think the matrix also doesn't I, quite work, I think, for me, partly because I think what we're doing here with a lot of the, the suggestion suggestions for sub themes is cutting at a really different dimension than the horizontal has given us here. So I think sort of that idea of, okay, put across as to, you know, which horizontal lines up with which vertical doesn't make a lot of sense because artificial intelligence, just to take one example there, um, and to focus on the second set of suggestions with the building, safeguarding, empowering, you could put an, an artificial intelligence themed workshop proposal under any one of those three. Um, and, and that's, I think, a strength. And I think that's true of, of really most of those horizontal ideas there. So you're in a way, we're sort of moving away from those horizontal distinctions and moving into a sort of different paradigm that says, okay, we have workshops that talk about building. We have workshops that talk about safeguarding um, a, a more sort of defensive posture. And we have workshops that talk about empowering, which is maybe sort of more about the, the governance processes. Um, and I think that can be useful. And actually, it's a bit reminiscent of what Eurodig did in 2023, uh, where the three focus areas they had were risks, resilience, and hope. Um, and that worked actually quite nicely in terms of giving different um, atmospheres almost to different sessions, and, and they sort of fit together quite nicely. And I think this, this at least set of second suggestions could possibly do that. But we have to sort of also think, is this something that is useful for the people engaging? Because that's really the, the primary audience here is, are, are we making this um, process and this this sort of forum, this, this meeting, one that people understand how to engage with and, and feel that they can engage with? So I think, yeah, we would need to, if we, if we went with something like that, which is a little bit more esoteric maybe uh, we would need to provide a bit of explanation and a bit of explanation as to why we've chosen to break it down in this way and what we're hoping to see um, in then constructing a, a program out of that Saba oh, sorry. Anita. Thank you, Chair. Um, I actually have um, another suggestion for the sub-teams, which is um, empowering inclusion or empowering inclusion in the digital age. The reason why I say this is because um, I believe the sub-team will foster um, inclusion across all of the age groups. Um, and it also highlights creating um, a digital ecosystem where everyone, including youth and marginalized groups, so have um, an equal opportunity regardless of their um, backgrounds or regardless of their circumstances. And and it also to also reflect the um, stock stock taking process as well as the call for um, thematic inputs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lito Ibarra, um, my member. What I like about this approach, um, having high-level topics and, and not a description of technologies or whatever, is that I think that we are going to stimulate the proponents to look for the purpose of what they're doing, which is help pre-flowing, or whatever topic we have here, instead of focusing on a technology per se or a technical problem. I mean, they, they will not focus on AI or, or media and content, or but they will focus on the purpose, not on the what, but on the what for. So, so I, I, I think the proponents will, that is why I will say uh, we, don't need to fill up this matrix because it will all depend on what is the purpose of using certain uh, aspects like cybersecurity or uh, 
AI or rights, it will depend on what of the of the general topic, high level topics, uh, I am doing this for, or my workshop or my my proposal intends to um, fortify or develop one of these five uh, areas in general. So I, I like this, and I don't think we need to fill up the the matrix in that sense because it will all depend. I could say an X in every uh, 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 <laughs> intersection, because at the at the end we will maybe we will have certain uh, proposals on that topic on uh, or the other using a different technology or different aspect of the technology. Thank you. Um, you you brought up a good point, Lito. And it's okay if you have all the axes. So let's say if I go a horizontal, that means I'm going across the road. Then I speak to each one of those um, technical terms. If I decide that I have all the axes and I'm going vertical and I'm talking AI, then I'm gonna to talk to how AI either hinders or helps um, hold and open. I'm gonna talk about how AI is good or bad for universal and inclusivity. So having the access filled out, that's fine because then it gives me um, a more focus that I'm not only going to, but going to talk about AI, the bad, <laughs> I'm going to talk about AI, the good, the bad, the ugly. So don't concern yourself if it has all access, that could be good, that could be bad. Um, and let's say if you have a workshop, somebody doing a workshop proposal, I said, okay, I have all access, but where do I want to focus? and they could decide where to focus. So that was the whole idea there. So why to have the matrix is because some um, we have persons saying, well, where would this fit? Where would that fit? And hopefully if you, I mean, you don't have to fill out the matrix, but in order for yourself to determine, am I missing um, digital cooperation? It doesn't fit into, any one of those sub themes that you gave me, then you can say, okay, this is there's a problem. Uh, Bruna. Um, thanks, Carol. Just on this point, um, I just wrote on the chat. It's I guess when I pointed out about to the discussions that we should be having, either high level or theme specific, it's also because um the sub themes are seen as the agenda for the IGF, um, for the year edition of the IGF. And and the point that, um, I guess, the, the if we take a high-level approach, we're also missing um, the chance of setting an agenda for the year. And that's my main concern about it. We don't need to say AI, the good, the bad, the ugly. We don't need to say um, LLMs and their effect on communication. We don't need to go as deep into the topics in that sense. but to me some sort of a hybrid approach between the high level and a few other things that were discussed and suggested by people like Jordan would be interesting for us to take because it can give um at least a little direction to community and and really the point here now is that um we can do as many exercises and matrix matrices as we want but in the end of the day this is just adding an extra layer on the work we have to do with the community. And just one workshop or a webinar explaining that AI goes into safeguarding and doesn't go into building won't gonna cut it. And, and the high level approach here, like at least the three ones that Jordan, uh, that Justin suggested, um, to me, they, they are not very agenda setting in that sense. So I guess I'm missing that part because we're already going with us somehow high level um, overarching theme. And if we go with high level sub themes as well, then the IGF can be interpreted as agenda less. And I don't think that's very strategic for us in 2024, that's all. Karina Irada, MAG member for the records. Um, I I agree with Lito's comment. Um, from my perspective, various issues such as cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, are inherently interdisciplinary and intersect with a wide range of topics, and making their more sustainable as open discussion subjects. 
that's my point of view. Thank you. Wow, silence in the mic. <laughs> okay, so I will now then pose the question and then we could move forward from there. Do we want high level or do we want to revert to um, the thematic um, input items, but keeping in mind that there are 11 thematic items um, items and you'll have to group them so that you're down to five, three to five. So for lack of better way of um, terming it, uh, there's a thematic input items, which is the green bar across. You want to go with that or do you want to go with the um, the broad theme? Or what they're calling, what are they calling it? The broad, wide, high level. Sorry, thank you. Okay, so who has the appetite for high level? Let's show hands, put your plus ones. Okay, um, we're waiting on the online people. Put your plus ones or your minus ones. Okay, so we're not answer, uh, understanding the question. Okay, yeah, that's no problem. Do we want the high level themes, which are the ones coming down in the column, column A, or do you want the ones that are in row one, where you're gonna have to end up grouping them because we don't want more than three to five themes, um, three to five sub themes, sorry. So I'm gonna put the question again. Okay, if you're confused, let's, let's make sure that the question is right. Anybody has a question on the question? Many? <laughs> well, um, I, I was wondering, so basically if we go with um, the green, uh, let's say, uh, horizontal row, this, if we if we end up combining them, wouldn't we end, be ending up eventually with the one, the vertical um, column? So um, yeah, that's why I would go with uh, the one on the vertical side. Thank you. Chris? Thanks, Carol. Is, okay. Thank, thanks, Carol. Um, uh, uh, many actually, I, I think, was making a bit the point that I would make here. I, I think we end up just combining into higher level groups. And I think, as I said before, in the, the last couple of years, we've had some assistance in that from the Global Digital Compact and from our common agenda um, and, and trying to reflect that. I think we need to move away from that this year. And I think what we end up in, if we just try and combine those, those sort of green ones is suboptimal. So, I mean, I, I think it does make sense to try using the vertical column um, to be a bit more intentional in our sort of high level principle based or thematic based um, distinctions. And sorry, is it possible to scroll down a bit to see the, the second and third suggestions properly as well? I, I think one thing I would say is that that first suggestion, which is the internet we want sub themes, I'm not sure that covers everything that we, or all that we need, um, even though it does have five. So I'm, I'm, yeah, probably lean more towards the others. Yeah. So that's, um, I started off the meeting, Chris, by trying to see whether or not we need to clean up those items or if there's a new suggestion. But I think we need to decide first if we're going to go high level or we're going to take the green. So we have Jordan. Uh, thanks, Carol. I, I think... Uh, it's our responsibility to come up with the program, right? And the feedback that we got from the community as lodged in the green things is feedback. It's suggestions to us. Ultimately, we as a group are accountable for these themes. If we pick something that really annoys the community, they will tell us and they'll be annoyed at us and we will say, sorry, we annoyed you. Um, but it doesn't mean we're bound by it. So 
If we want to go detailed into topics, we could just pick five of those 11 green things. There's no reason to say that we have to merge or group them. Um, it all comes down to a decision that we have to make, whether we want to be a sort of, um, we're just trying to create buckets around the stuff that's come through in the survey, or whether we want to drive some cho chosen focus uh, informed by that feedback, but not bound by it. Um, and so that's why I'm more in favor, I think, of either the first, you know, a, the, some version of the broad uh, pink, orange, whatever we call it, uh, colored uh, approach. Uh, and I'm least in favor of trying to group the 11 green things into three to five themes. I'd be more in favor of picking three to five of the specific ones and saying those are the themes of this year's event or the topics of this year's event. I see them more as topics than the ones on the left going down as themes. I just also want to record, I agree with Chris's point around the internet, we want paper ones. To me, they feel too aimed at the internet and not aimed enough at internet and digital governance, which I think is where we should be focused. So, so I have a question for you. Abdul Rahman, he came up with a good point. Are we going to be, um, do we want things that are inspirational? or technical? In fact, this is, can be done up front, but also can be done uh, at, at after we receive the proposals and accepting the proposal. So do we want to do it up front, putting this in indication on the submission form that you need to be identif identify what is your proposal? Is it on the inspiration side or is it is it on um, secure side, whatever it is, or at the end we can develop uh, what we call it journeys for for participant, and then we decide at Mag. So we can do it up front, and we can do it uh, at the end. It, it, it is it is it is the call for the Mag. Rina, then Bruna. Okay, Karina Mirarda, for MAG member for the record. Um, I think about um, in various events I have attended, general themes are outlined. And possible topics to be discussed are listed in parentheses. And merely as example, only an example, the, the, yeah, suggestion. You you can include uh, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, or the topics in, in the IGF. Also, emphasizing that are the least but not exhausted. This is an option. Bruna? Bruna? Okay. I um no, just to be clear, I think um what I the the option that would be kind of the hybrid between the high level and thematic is third suggestion that's in the screen. Um that would be the one that would allow for us to do what we've done in previous years, like um do a one pager for each of those topics and explain where some of the discussions might come in and things like that. I do believe we have we need some general guidelines. I'm I'm the point that I came in um earlier on the high level is that I don't really like second number two because I think it's too confusing to anyone that's trying to submit a panel. Um and as for when do we take this decision, I would maybe urge us to take this decision now before we open the workshop submission process, because these are part of the guidelines for the IGF community. These are part of the guidelines for the attendees and anyone that's willing to have a space here. I don't think it's very transparent of us to go through a whole call of sessions and panel submissions, and then we decide on the topics if we've done the call for input before. So then the process gets a little too confusing. So my perhaps my request here is for us to keep um, the tradition we have and in which like the call for input feeds this discussion, we then issue a call for workshops based on a list that we're setting now instead of setting later. I don't think it's very transparent or helpful if we set anything afterwards, that's all. Thank you, Bruna. Octavia?
I should be yeah. I just wanted to to second that. I think um the the guy if we if we do it later what I I don't fear but but I I think we're going to get to a point where we're we're pushing our responsibilities upon others uh, among them our communities and and um and I think so for now um I I I agree with the third suggestion being the best encompassing between these two polls that that we're seeing but um I just I think these one pagers or I think us providing the guidelines for the communities to be able to then go in and say okay I'm going to submit under these different um topics and or you know allow them to 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 sort of have guidelines and then decide afterwards what to do um I also just want to be mindful of the time um and and suggest yeah I don't know, Chair, what do you suggest we do at this point? I don't know how many people are after me uh, talking, but I think I think doing it up front and addressing perhaps the third option as as one that bridges the two um, is my contribution to this. So in the chat, there seems to be a bit of confusion. So I'm going to put it in a slightly different way, uh, everyday term. I can either, I can say, make me a chocolate cake and here are the ingredients. Or I could just say, make me a chocolate cake. If I say, make me a chocolate cake and I give you the ingredients, there's no room for innovation. There's no room for um, thinking out of the box. Whereas if I say, make me a chocolate cake, then people have, I can be innovative. I can um, add a coffee liqueur to my, co to my cake. Whereas when I gave you the ingredients, there was no coffee liqueur. And trust me, adding a coffee liqueur to your cake is, okay? So I don't know if that helps. Are you going to say, so to me, in my mind, the green is saying, make me a chocolate cake and here are the ingredients. You must use those. You cannot leave anything out. You must use it. Whereas the um, vertical or the column is saying, I want a chocolate cake. Do something. I don't know if that helped or made, made you more confused. <laughs> So, uh, so hold on, Alga, I do, I'm a foodie. That's why I said at the beginning, I, I'm a foodie. So everything comes back to macaroni and chocolate cake. Okay, yeah. Alga? Uh, yes, thanks, Carol. So I was thinking, uh, I, I kind of have a feeling that there is uh, some consensus that we should go uh, with this uh, more high level options, but still, uh, let's say, yeah, uh, uh, mid high level options maybe this is something which is a consensus between uh, going into those uh, topical issues which are in green and uh, those very high level things which are uh, coming under the first and second uh, orange uh, uh, suggestions uh, so i think uh, the third one really stands as as a compromise in between those but maybe just uh, uh, you know refining uh, the wording of those uh, and i think also in this way if we do not really stick uh, to the green ones uh, uh, to the green topics uh, we kind of leave more flexibility for the people who will be submitting uh, the proposals so that uh, because okay we can pick uh, three of them four of them five of them does not matter but then this means we should leave something uh, behind and while i understand that some of them it's okay to leave some behind and some of them rank higher than others in terms of uh, priority as we have seen uh, yesterday during the presentation but uh, still there are people to whom even if those have been just those five percent but if they are ready to invest into uh, making that proposal uh, so why just uh, not uh, leaving that door open so i would say yeah if you don't really stick to some specific uh, uh, issue topics uh, uh, this uh, gives us more flexibility and uh, more openness towards uh, towards the suggestions, and I think that that comes with what you were saying about uh, not predefining the ingredients, but uh, leaving some space for uh, for innovation and uh, fresh ideas. Thank you. 
Samir. 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 Uh, oh, please pronounce it for yes, us, tell us because <laughs> trying a tie doesn't help. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's Samana. Um, so uh, Samana uh, from I Can Help for the Record. Um, I'm a new MAC member and I uh, what I would would have uh, what type of input I would have liked to have to be able to better decide on the options, even though I already sort of understood that there is a general, seems to be a general consensus on having the high level options and also having preferred topics, um, is to know what works before and what didn't work before, um, um, which is not still clear for me. That's one point. And second point is that um, for the low level topics in green, the more detailed topics, what I see is that there is a lot of overlap between them. So uh, they can easily be, um, be uh, summarized into five or four topics instead of the detailed ones for the reason that the overlap can later be confusing. People who would be submitting proposals related to security and artificial intelligence, especially for the reason that some of the topics seem to be more like topics and some of the topics seem to be more like tools which are relevant into every topic. So uh, my take and suggestion from, from what has been discussed so far is to basically um, go with a third option that seems to be the preferred option. I remain on the high level one, but, but uh, uh, set some of the low level topics as like the preferred topics just to have a guideline for uh, everybody who submits and, and to do it beforehand, not afterwards. Because if we do it afterwards, it won't be transparent, neither for us and uh, nor for the people who submit. Thank you, peace. Oh, sorry, Karina, uh, that's all hand, <laughs> peace. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so uh, with your explanation and uh, hearing from the rest of the MAC members, I think um, coming from the working group on workshop processes, we had a lot of feedback uh, in relation to the having sessions that are speaking about the same sessions that are similar, same speakers or who, if the high level um, or the, the cake without the recipe can be of help. I think it would be nice to, to take that. And I think looking at the third suggestion, you know, in the orange, I think those could be helpful. For me, I think I want us to have something that can give people the, cre uh, the, the opportunity to be creative and not just have the same thing all through, but also avoiding the confusion that um, the workshop organizers could have the overlap and the confusion that's something that i would want us to avoid thank you chair okay thank you seems like there it's time for us to decide are we going with Okay, um, the thematic inputs, those titles, that is it. There's no decision on that. Those are the titles given and what we'll go with. The, um, the vertical on column B, it is, the orangey colors. We still have the opportunity to change those high level ones. We haven't decided that those are the high level ones because right up now we have a first suggestion second suggestion, a third, and the starting of a fourth. So right up and now, we just want to decide, are we going green or are we going orange? Um, yes, the vote? Not a vote. vote. Orange. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, can the last one, my suggestion is can the last one, which is empowering inclusion in the digital space, be included in the orange? Okay.
objection with going with the one of the vertical options we don't we haven't specified which ones yet but so we are now concentrating on the vertical options that's the orange options mm -hmm. so i don't see any mm -hmm. uh, yes but you have to say it okay sorry consensus is that we're going high level so now the discussion switches to are we going to use first, second, and third as is, or are we coming up with a fourth? Are we going to mix first, second, and third to come up with a fourth? What are we going to do? So that's the discussion, and we're going to give it how long? <laughs> we're going to give the last one half an hour. Yeah. Maybe. So we, it seems like we're counting half hours in twos. Um, so we're going to give it until quarter past. Sorry, we're going to give it until quarter past three to determine what's going to be the high level sub themes. I just want to make a, a comment with regards to the first one, just to recall that those uh, that's a listing from the Internet We Want um, paper, and that is something that the MAG will be working with the LP during the year. Okay, Alhaji. <laughs> yeah, yes, um, I was just thinking we come up with a fourth one the way we pick the best from from those three and then and come up with a solidified uh, very good one so i'll suggest that thank you I can hear the brains moving, but the mouth isn't. Anybody? <laughs> As we said, one aligns with the Internet We Want paper, so there is a symmetry in that. Since we are pushing the Internet We Want paper, and then we can also have it as the themes for the meeting. So there's some sense in that one too of course there's also sense in that one as well um and it's less of a division and of course number three as well which is five and the last one is that a start of four i think maybe mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. but Karina, you were about to say something, and we were very grateful. Karina Mirarda, MAG member. Yes, read the, the list. Um, I would like to express my support for the proposal number three. And why? From the agreative start point, 
uh, encourage me to suggest a range of topics related to with various technologies. And I think this is my opinion. Thank you. Um, Alyssa, do you want your list to go up as a suggestion or are you just leaving it in the chat? Thank you, Chair. Um, I also support the third option, but can we consider adding um, the last one into as as a six six um, sub team because still I believe it is a high level. This team is a high level and can be considered into the third option. Thank you. Okay, I'm just gonna have a question for you, um, Saba. Don't you think empowering inclusion in the digital space? can be the same or included in human rights in the digital universe? Because you have digital universe, digital space, um, empowering inclusion, inclusion is part of human rights. I can agree with that. You could, that, okay, good. Alhaji? Oh, sorry, no, you gotta wait. Sorry, okay. sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, I, I have, I'm I have sure Chris. Before, so. Yeah, I have Chris, Bruna, well, and I'll, I'll no, have no, you. you must start with each other. I did. No, I, I did. Yes. Yeah, but those two ads are friends. I think Lito was Okay, so we'll do Lito, <laughs> Chris, Bruna, and Haji. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Lito Ibarra, a man member. Um, I like also the suggestion number three. And I, but I would like also to stick to five topics. So uh, I will suggest um, including empowering inclusion in the digital space instead of number three, unity for peace and sustainability, because I don't see clearly the, the types of uh, proposals that will come under this, this third topic. So my proposal, concrete proposal is to include the, the last one, the empowering inclusion, instead of a current uh, uh, um, topic number three. Thank you. Uh, Chris then. Yep, thank you. Um, Lito was actually reading my thoughts there in the first part, um, in that I was wondering what the uh, supporting option three, wondering a bit about number three, unity for peace and sustainability. Um, I hadn't got to the so solution that he came up with, but having heard that, I would support that. So um, replacing number three with what is now number four, number one, empowering inclusion in the digital space. Um, but I think that would give us a, a nice comprehensive set of themes um, and also help to maybe structure some of the, the discussions. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether al is first is something new. Well, let's go Alhaji. It's been spoken a lot. Alhaji, then Bruna. Thank, thank and you. And Josephine. Yes, um, Alhaji, my member. If you look at number three, uh, the three, the third option, number one, that is harnessing innovation and potential of digital. What it seems incomplete. Number one, harnessing innovation and potential of digital. It seems something has to come on it. If you look at number one. So it seems incomplete to me. Then um, the last option, which is the human rights, which is uh, number five here, and uh, human rights in the digital um, universe, um, uh, I think that one can be actually be matched with uh, number three. 
we just empower, empower inclusion in the digital space. Those two can be merged together. But I think we need to do something better for number one um, to, to complete it. Harnessing innovation and potential of digital inclusion or digital diversity, whatever we want to add, but I think it needs to it needs to it needs to be added. Thank you. Okay, just to comment on the last one, number one, we only did the abbreviation from the internet we want um paper. Okay. But they do qualify each one of those. We okay. just we just put in the abbreviation. Okay. That's okay. Uh Rona, we're coming to you. Better managing risks. Can we say managing risks better? This is in the third one, number two. It says better managing risks. And I would like to suggest managing risks better. Hold that thought because we have Bruna. Thanks. Um... Just also flagging that um, Carol and Chingata, your microphones are open while you're discussing the list. Um, and I could overhear that I'm talking a lot, but I also understand it. I, I do take the floor a couple of times because I'm also interested and invested on the agenda. So I'll police myself better further on. But um, my suggestions would be um, perhaps about number one and two. Again, I would bundle them up. Um, I would do something about harnessing innovation and potential of digital of digital spaces and managing risks or something like that. Not the best wording, but we can think about something related to that. But harnessing is also a discussion about um, addressing some of those risks, right? And managing them. So that's one thing. And um, I would keep the peace um, part because I do believe that a lot of the debates around um, the digital space, including cyber, um, the cyber treaty, have been around addressing peace. And, and there is this new kind of take that's also UN language that could be very relevant to bring in here. I would also be all for keeping sustainability. We have been going over and over and over around sustainability and, and a green internet, a green web. So I, I would really think that it's, it's a loss for us to lose that perspective. And I would um, perhaps add inclusion to the number five. So, I would bundle up what we're looking now is that I would bundle up um, inclusion and human rights and then bring back the unity for peace and sustainability, because it also kind of hints at some level of continuation from the work we have been doing in previous years. And um, I, I get your point, Saba, about um, namely naming inclusion. I also think it's relevant, but then perhaps we can do it together with human rights instead of having it as a standalone kind of topic. So that would be my suggestions. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Justin Meliza, MAG member for the record. I would like to uh, support Bruna's suggestions. I think um, having uh, inclusion, sorry, sustainability uh, and peace are uh, part of the uh, conversations that are happen happening globally. And I think it also aligns well uh, with the theme, uh, thematic areas around the SDGs uh, and in favor of option number three. Thank you. Um, thank you. Yeah, as I've listened to this conversation, I've, I've really kind of been somewhat agnostic whether we have high level principles as sub themes, or we specify specific topics that then make it easy to organize our work. So either way was kind of fine. I worry a little bit that what we're doing now is a third option, which is high level principles that won't make it easy for us to organize our work. And if you think about some of the proposals that are coming in, I don't know what we put under harnessing innovation on workshop proposals that come in. It's I, it's something to support, certainly support innovation. How does that help organize our work? What kind of topics are we putting under that? If you think of something, uh, I think artificial intelligence from most regions and stakeholders is number one. Well, where does artificial intelligence go in? Well, we would divide it out through a lot of the topics. Well, that makes it very hard for a group to evaluate similar proposals re related to artificial intelligence. I was on that group last year and we tried to find a balance of different kind of themes 
so we weren't duplicating a lot of sessions. If you start addressing those in different groups, uh, it becomes harder. Similarly with Unity for Peace, I, I mean, that sounds good, but again, what does that do for us if we're using this to organize our work? What kind of proposals go into that uh, and, and kind of give some direction on what we're looking for? So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with this approach to kind of have more specific, I think, but if that's what we're doing, ensuring that it actually is geared towards helping us do the next step, which is to, you know, evaluate the kind of workshop proposals and, and other uh, agenda items. Thanks. And then Olga and Jordan. Thank oh, you. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Oh. oh. So we're just going to go um, online then. Yeah, Olga was supposed to be. Okay, is that a new app? Okay. So we've got to go many, Olga, Jordan. Octavia, peace. So um, many Mac member here, uh, just a quick suggestion and building on, on Justin's point, would it be um, maybe a proposal to combine, because the, the way I see it, number one and um, three could possibly be under one, um, same theme, for example, harnessing digitalization for development. I think this way we cover both the sustainability front, both the innovations uh, under it. And yeah, so I would suggest for the consideration of, of the of the group um, to do harnessing digitalization for development as uh, a combination of one and three. I'm sorry, can you say your last sentence again? Yeah, I would suggest to do harnessing digitalization for development as a proposal to combine number one and number three. So deleting number three and then keeping that one. But i um, happy to hear uh, everyone's thoughts. Um, Olga? Um, I was, I have kind of a feeling that, uh, uh managing risks uh, shouldn't be separated as a separate, uh, sub team because it doesn't, at least to me, it doesn't tell anything what specifically should be suggested over here. So I would, uh, I would bundle it, uh, with the, I don't know how it goes now, but before when it was about harnessing innovation, uh, uh, in that uh, formulation, it was uh, going originally with also managing risks because it's always about if if something new is coming up or something is uh, uh, under development, then it always comes uh, with the risks that we also need to find a way how to uh, how to address. Uh, and uh, I also I'm not sure whether we also want to keep uh, when we talk about improving multi-stakeholder governance, whether we want to make a specific. Uh, uh, stress on multi-stakeholder and whether it's only governance so we also want to talk about uh, cooperation uh, as well uh, and uh, this uh, item about uh, um, unity for peace and sustainability I think this is uh, important as a standalone uh, uh, sub team uh, and it's at least me I can imagine a lot of things uh, come under this uh, related to um, like too, too many things like coming I mean, with uh, positive like uh, green technologies and then if we talk about peace, uh, uh, cyber security, uh, cyber crime, even the disinformation uh, campaigns might uh, might fall here. So there is a space for creativity under this top, um, sub team. Uh, thank you, Olga. Uh, Jordan? Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, Jordan Carter here, Technical Community. I think, you know, there, there's something about the upsides and the downsides of these technologies. 
uh, that people are talking about, right? Governments are talking about, regulators are talking about, communities are talking about, um, and it should be on the agenda. And there's something about peace and sustainability that are world-shaping, world-shaking problems that the world is facing. And do we want to make this dialogue important to communities? Do we want to disappear up into our own you know, specific uh, issues? So that's why I was thinking it would be good to have one about um, you know, the upsides and the downsides, innovation and risks. It'd be good to have something about peace and sustainability because they're the things the world is facing. Um, we have this agenda of dialogues in the UN that are about digital governance, internet governance. And if we don't put that on the agenda at the IGF, the IGF is essentially resigning itself from being uh, an influential player in the debate about its own future. So I think it has to be on the agenda one way or the other. Um, uh, I, I personally think it's nice to have a focus around human rights and a focus about empowering inclusion that are that are different because they do come from different angles. Inclusion is very much about actions that all stakeholders can can take, uh, either reducing barriers or improving capacities. Um, human rights has a little bit more of a legal focus in a lot of senses, but I think they are interesting ones. So that's why I sort of, I think we're, I think we're homing in on something whichever way you go, but I tried to keep those two examples, um, those two things separate around inclusion and human rights by merging the risks and opportunities or the innovation and the risks. So I've, I put that in the chat. I can post it again if that's useful. Octavia? Thank you, Carol. Um, Building on some of the thoughts that other colleagues have had, I think we um, we have to be able to, again, understand that we come to the IGF not just to be inspired, but but absolutely also to be challenged. Um, understanding that we come from, you know, government, we come from private sector, we come from um, civil society. Some of us have worked in all three. Uh, many of us, I um, I think. Uh, it's more for me, at least, about coming to terms with whatever verbs that we're using in the beginning is one thing. What do we think about the core of what each and every one has? You know, so innovation and balance in risk, inclusion in digital worlds, multi stakeholder governance, um, you know, looking at human rights, well, human rights in the digital universe, I think, is maybe one of them, and then peace and sustainability. Are these the future focused conversations that we want the IGF to hold in December? That's, I think, at the core of it. The rest, um, I think we, we we can sort of and and if we if we don't as a group understand that we can that you know, if we still don't understand <laughs> what these sentences are about or potentially could hold, um then perhaps we need to take, I don't want to say a step back, but maybe reflect a, a, a little bit and figure out how our decision-making process is going to be um, within the time that we've allocated today and maybe rearrange our priorities um, as for that. Um, but for me, at least, I find it extremely important that we, I'm having a little bit of an issue with the, the changes are happening a little bit faster. The first, uh, the harnessing, oh, Jordan, yes. The harnessing innovation, and no, that's the new one. The 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 previous number one, I think, had had good solid potential, um. But I do like comments from colleagues that see risk in each and every one of them. I do too. I also see inclusion in each and every one of them. I also see the potential to discuss innovative technologies, what they can bring us within what context, and how we want to limit that or not, or how we want to govern that. Um, depending on where we sit. And so, I don't know, I, 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 I urge my colleagues, my MAG colleagues that are participating in this to perhaps look at what the essential part of that sentence means to them and their communities, whether that's governments um, that they represent or civil society or industry. If that resonate with you, then maybe we can move to the next step and figure out what verb best assists us in gaining um, more traction and communication and understanding of uh, good proposals into that. And also just following on, I think Bruna said earlier, 
um, or maybe it was uh, Justin, I think. Anyway, the one pager is going to assist people in understanding, right? There's going to be information and communication around these. Um, so it's not absolutely free for all to say, okay, I'm going to interpret this at will. People will look for information and come to us as well. Thank you. Um, thank you. So I'm going to add what Wim has said in the chat, along with what Octavia just said. We've been talking about communication. So we can't just have things in isolated buckets or silos. What are these messages, or we should approach this as the messages that are going to come out of the IGF. So when we frame these, think of how we, is this the message that IGF, or are these the messages that IGF wants to put out there? And not just some fancy terminology. Uh, another point that Octavia made. So let's say I'm putting on my government stakeholder hat. Things like, um, well, a lot of these things may not interest me. I want, I as a government stakeholder, I want you to talk about how I'm going to grow my economy. That's all my people want to know. My constituents want to know money, education, health. Bottom line. But that's only government stakeholder. If you think of, I don't know if Al Haji being <laughs> in, in that arena, what interests you? Can I go to my constituents and talk about um, empowering inclusion in the digital world? That could translate to in the digital world, the economy will grow. So I'm not saying that that's what I want you to put. I just want you to think, what is the message and what does it mean to your community? Peace, are you there? Are you dropped? No. Um, many? Yes, Chair, I did. Okay, go ahead, Peace. No, I did drop my hand down because Olga spoke to what I wanted to say and then there was a bit of reorganizing the word. Some, like number three was having risk and, risks and the same as number three then, but okay, these, these were all changed. So I put my hand down. Thank you. Okay, just a disclaimer, we're two minutes past the quarter past. Um, Alan. Thank you, Cher. Um, I'm thinking about facts and 2.4 billion people in the world and don't access the internet. And so empowering inclusion in the digital world uh, implies that there is a digital world where, where there, there are people uh, involved. So maybe it is better to say empowering digital inclusion in the world in order to uh, consider those people uh, who are unconnected. And, and other thing is that uh, this sense for connectivity to be universal is uh, put in the IWW paper very clearly. Universal and inclusive internet uh, for all the people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carol. So my my question is this. Uh, for me, all these uh, suggestions are very valid, but I have a hard time responding to your question. How do you justify one rather than the other? So in looking at what has been said until today, there has been an emphasis put on making sure 
that, for example, when there was a conversation about multi-stakeholder, there was reference to the creation of the IGF that included this word. So kind of like almost a sense of compliance, if you will. So there was something very important that was said before, that this is a critical year given that in 2025, there's supposed to be a new mandate for the IGF. So if we look at the 2015 resolution that the reconfirmed the mandate of the IGF, there were specific issue that had been identified in that resolution. Cursory review, as people were talking, I just took note, connectivity, digital divide, affordability, access, education, cooperation, capacity building, multilingualism, local content, cultural preservation, disability, ethics, interoperability in open source, enabling environment. So I think that we, there are a couple of options here. One, also in order to be, if you be accountable to those who will be submitting proposal and to enable the MAG to have clear criteria to say, this is how we evaluated the proposal. Being compliant with the 2015 resolution can be an option. The second option can be to make sure that you are clear the intention to propose something new. So given that the 2025 is going to be the renewal of the mandate, should this team inform also the new mandate? So my, my question is about looking about these two options and define the criteria. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dino. Uh, Catherine? Hello, uh, Catherine Block Iberg, um, MAG member. Um, I, um, I just had a, a reflection regarding the, the question on what this means for my group. So I'm, I'm from a National Human Rights Institute. And one of the things that I feel is somewhat kind of missing or not really mentioned here is accountability. Um, so, of course, human rights in the digital uh, universe can include some of that, but um, I'm just wondering if we can make that point a little bit clearer as to what roles and responsibilities different stakeholders have um, around um, these different subtopics or, or issues that we're dealing with here, um, and kind of this this whole notion of, of who holds the responsibility, how should we deal with it, who's accountable to ensuring this, is it the private entities involved, is it governments, et cetera. So something around uh, accountability and, and also remedy in that context. Not completely sure on how to include that, but I think really important also to reflect on that when providing the more detailed descriptions also on the issues. Um, and then uh, a second point that I have is on the empowering uh, digital inclusion in the world. Um, I did have a reflection, uh, which I think I posted in the chat, but also was wondering if we could um, uh, not only talk about uh, digital inclusion in the sense of, um, of um, including uh, digital inclusion in the sense of um, uh, of, yeah, I think, no, sorry, um, never mind. My point uh, has been addressed, I think, in the formulation here. It was in the chat. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Um, Jordan, are you putting yours forward into the the listing that you have there? Are you throwing that in the hat as a list? Uh, the, the doc I linked in the chat is those five headings. And I just tried to write a couple of sentences under each of them about what they might mean okay. to give more flavor. So it wasn't trying to do another okay. list. Yeah, it was just trying to say, maybe we need to have more than a sentence, um, but it might not be helpful. So <laughs> just, you know, don't shoot me. Um, so we're going to give up brains a little break. We have um, a response from the, the host country on some possible um, themes, umbrella themes. So maybe that might focus us. 
just hold it. Um, Celine, you want to get ready to type them so they can see just uh, um, on a PowerPoint or whatever, just to, so people will see them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so thank you very much. Um, uh, uh, I share uh, the, uh, yeah, I mean, the outcome of today meeting with the technical community. And hey, they, the first of all, they appreciate the effort of MAG and thank you for this great um, uh, intervention. Uh, the community looked to all the possible options and even with the translation for the, uh, the themes that we are putting in place and find difficulty in, in, in multi-stakeholder, um, as I was expecting uh, in this morning. And instead, they, they refer to the last year uh, uh, theme, the internet that we want, and we think we is is the multi-stakeholder. We as, as multi-stakeholder uh, think of that. So they come up with a couple of proposals um, for you, how you get to consider um, on, uh, 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 on uh, IGF 2024. Uh, first is is building uh, building our digital future, and they think this is one of the you know, the preferred option for the hosting country, where or is just give more of humanized and uh, direct uh, connection with the visitors for for, for the IGF. Uh, they are also we are also okay with with building digital future alone as a statement. Uh, the third option is building digital future for all, and the fourth option. Um, uh, building digital future together. Uh, and the host country would like uh, to ask the MAG for uh, kind consideration for this option for the technical community. Uh, and that's 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 all. Thank you. Okay, we're just gonna take um, Bruna. I think she has something to say on the last conversation, and then we're gonna switch conversations to here and get feedback on those. So whilst we listen to Bruna and mull over those things. Okay. Thank you. Um, just mm -hmm. about the sub-themes, perhaps Secretariat can help us with a clear table on just listing last year's sub-themes and the ones we've been uh, more or less deciding on. I think it would be helpful just for us to see whether there is like some overlapping stuff or whether we can um, reshape things in, in, in that sense. Um, if actually, inaugurating the next one, I would just maybe um, ask us to keep the multi-stakeholder aspects um, for all together. It's not the same. So it's just as basic as that. It was really, it would be, very important to keep um, going ahead on the political statement that would be bringing multi stakeholder into the overarching theme. That's all. Can I speak now? Okay. Um, so now we're switching to the themes. I see your hand, Chris, is for the themes. Yes. Okay, good. Um, yes, no, and uh, thank you, Abdul Rahman, and thank you to the um, the your technical community colleagues in Saudi. I think their input and, and work here is very much appreciated. I, I do think, and I, I appreciate, and as a, a native English speaker, I realize um, I don't want to um, oversimplify the, the sort of the question about multi-stakeholder, I, I do go back to my earlier point. I think it has sort of, it, it's not as straightforward in English even as we might sort of think it could be, but I'm not sure that that's a, a, a reason to dismiss it. I think perhaps it's a reason that we have this conversation. I do think it's really important that we have it in here. And I think there was that was a real theme that came through from the discussions this morning. There were a lot of people who were very... Um, adamant about that. I'm obviously one that's very adamant about that. And I'm uh, keen to sort of hear from from others, obviously, um, if I'm alone in that. But I do think this, um, these, these options here, I think they, I, I appreciate and like the building um, coming from Lito's suggestion. I think that's very positive um, uh, for all and together, uh, a sort of uh, very positive senses but this doesn't really give me any insight into 
the nature of the Internet Governance Forum itself. And I think that's something we really need to be putting some emphasis on. Um, and I think multi-stakeholder is a word that has been at the forefront of these discussions in the UN global context um, for two decades. It's been uh, used in other senses um, for longer than that. Um, so I think it, it's something that we really do need to put an emphasis on. And I, I'd really like to see some options with that word multi-stakeholder included in, in the themes. Thanks. Okay, just to bring something in from the chat, um, it says building a digital future for all together. Thou? Yeah, thank you for the host country. Uh, I think all these three are acceptable. And personally, I like the first one. I think it is in align with the, our common agenda and it's very inclusive. Thank you. Jordan. Jordan. Uh, thanks, Carol. Um, thanks, Abdulrahman, for just passing those through. I guess I'm a little bit disappointed that the clear steer of the mag this morning, that every option had multi-stakeholder in it, has come back with no options with multi-stakeholder in it. I think that's a shame. The only one of those four suggestions that's on the board that has any connection with that concept is the last one, because it talks about building something together. And that kind of is the essence of internet governance or internet cooperation, as Paul Wilson likes to call it. Um, so if I had to choose any of those, personally, it would be the last one. Um, I was trying to find that PDF that someone circulated earlier on this morning to see whether multi-stakeholder was always or even a common uh, thing to be included in the overall theme for the IGF. If I had that list in front of me, I think my answer would probably be that it isn't. Uh, but I think this is an important discussion for the MAG to, to consider because either we can make some collective decisions about the political direction of this event or we can't. Um, and the, the response from the host country has put us in the position of having to choose that, which I think is a shame. Uh, so uh, just um, on messaging with, with the technical community, and uh, they appreciate the multi-stakeholder approach, but the problem is that, I mean, the consensus that they have among them and they are the experts is that they want to make it just simple for the people. So uh, there is no uh, issue with the, with the concept, but knowing the the local content, I would say, and knowing the people around us, knowing the people in the region, that's what pushed them Hagiga, to uh, uh, to, to, to take much simpler language than the language that, that they propose. Uh, and, and again, this is uh, yeah, any, uh, for the MAG, and I appreciate uh, your comment, but uh, yeah, and I hope it, it was not disappointment because of simplicity. I mean, there is no, nothing behind it except just we want to make this something digestible by the massive people in the region and attract more people to, to that one. So thank you, thank you, Jordan, for your comment. Octavia. Oh, Hi sorry, again. Zhao. Sorry, sorry, oh. Octavia Zhao. Yeah. The old hand, okay. Um, Octavia, then Alyssa, and many. Yes, now, yes. Um, so uh, I wanted to just add in that um, I I also really do miss the the multi stakeholder in that I understand the technical community. I've also been a part of that for a long time, and snappy is better, Abdurrahman. I understand, um, but building indicates that we haven't for me, um, and so culturally building something means that we are going to, and for me. I, I, I feel that this community and this place and these stakeholders particularly have built, right? So I'm still very, very keen on trying to find multi-stakeholder in there. Um, my other suggestion, which I hope is not gonna set everyone aside is that we add an S. So digital futures for all together or however that is, um, because the digital future is not a singularity. It, 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 for me, at least, it, it it's an opportunity, future-focused opportunity that 
that allows for us to think in, in many different um, futures and future settings. So finding a way of, of maybe taking, taking building and yeah, digital futures or multi-stakeholder futures for all together, something like that. Um, anyway, thank you. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, this is Lisa Eva for the record. Um, I also, I, I need to, to express my, uh, my regrets that the, it, all the options don't include multi-stakeholder. Um, um, it was something we all felt really strong about and even you proposed it yourself. Um, so, well, I felt really good when we went to lunch, um, which was delicious by the way. Um, but, no, I, I, I must say I, I'm 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 sad to see that we, we don't have multi stakeholder in all these uh, propositions. It doesn't translate well, I understand that as well. It doesn't translate well to Dutch either. Um but it's a key word to the IGF, I think, and it's a key moment why we wanted to have um the word in the um in the in the main overarching theme. And so I would really want to ask you to take it back to your your group and and to to see if there's really not an option um to uh, to add in multi stakeholder. Thank you. Um just before we go on to many, I think what um persons were looking at was something that Justin I think had suggested that we go with the colon. So you could have that first part and the colon, a multi-stakeholder solution or approach. Um, many? Um, yeah, just, uh, I, I think I'm, I'm also in general of the same view um, that the translation issue has, has lapsed at this point. Um, the word multi-stakeholder has been, is in the IGF mandate and has been over the years. So um, I think that it should be included. Um, it's, it's an important time that we discuss about this and that we explain this uh, as part of our outreach strategy. Um, maybe an alternative would be if if we're sticking in the translation issue, all stakeholders may be something that we could put, but then again, um, it, it goes away, it moves away from the multi-stakeholder one. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, many. Just a comment from the chat um, to put into consideration that um, we say our digital in two, three, four, and five, like we have in one. So it kind of should personalize and makes it feel like people will take ownership. Um, crazy? Great. And capacity as an observer. Multi-stake. Uh, yeah. But, uh, this is in my capacity as an observer. Multi-stakeholderism was there in the IGF since its initiation. It's there for the last 20 years. It's a fact on the ground. It has been improved. Uh, if we see how the IGF is from 2006 till today with the multi-stakeholder process, it is something that is always there, included, and taken for granted. So, uh, when we say words like together and all, actually we are emphasizing on it. Uh, we don't see the, uh, personally I don't see an addition in putting that word specifically because it's a fact. We are just ensuring it and improving it and making sure that it is year after year, it is more, uh, we are more involved as a stakeholders. So really we can use Synonyms like all, which means stakeholders and beyond. Together, it means stakeholders and beyond. Uh, ours means all stakeholders and beyond. This is without that, this is all come 
this is all reflect multi-stakeholders and without putting the word there in the slogan. So something that we were th was there for the last 20 years, it's not something new, it's not a challenge, it's a fact on the ground and we believe in it. And we don't convene any internet governance without a multi-stakeholder process. So really words like all together can cover it. Uh, in, 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 in a fair and actually broader uh, sense. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think what the proponents for multi-stakeholders saying is that if we were in 2026, 2027, 2028, it wouldn't matter to put multi-stakeholder, but we're not at that point. We're at a point where with this is next year. So it's not so much, you want a combination. We want to bring in that people element, but we don't want to leave out that this is a critical time. And therefore that word, multi-stakeholder, even though to me, multi-stakeholder means together because it's everybody. Um, but I see the point where we're not in 2026. We're not in 2027. We're in 2024 and next year, 2025, before we have the 2025 um, IGF, it's important that we're multi-stakeholder. Um, Otis? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to make two short comments. Uh, I like the word building because it implies action. So it's action oriented. Um, so I think I think it's also uh, invokes a process that's ongoing. Um, so yeah, I, I I like the options presented. Um, in terms of the world multi stakeholder, I I think even even though it might be missing in the name, doesn't mean it to miss in the process. I think then it's it's uh, the IGF still remains a, a multi stakeholder platform. Um, so I think demonstrating it would be um, to me much more actionable than uh, having it in the name. artist Bruna. Thank you. Um, replying almost directly to, to Otis on that. Um, the problem is not it, we're not defending. I don't think the pro the overarching theme is about the I. It's about the IGF in the way that we will continue to be multi stakeholder. The problem is that this is a pivotal year. This is an inflection point in history where. A lot of things might be discussed. The GDC might still be considering a digital cooperation forum, for an instance, that will be a duplication of the IGF space with much less stakeholder participation than we have here. Whereas we have this space that's where that's fully mandated to bring in all stakeholders into the debate, and we have our model to stand for ourselves. So it's really about us sending the political message we should be sending in 2024 instead of defending whatever model we have. Um, and it's also important to give this broader political message to other spaces that a couple of months ago um, completely erased the technical community from multi-stakeholder discussions and from the GDC process and many other processes that don't take into account civil society, for an instance. Like, So just to quote some examples, like I really believe that this is an inflection point in history and where we should be doing for the first time in this history, perhaps, bring the multi-stakeholder model or the multi-stakeholder into the overarching theme. Like it's not a it's not something very basic or not something very frugal in that sense, but really um us more like acknowledging that a lot of processes might be um risking or might be uh, presenting themselves as a threat to us. And it's for it's it's kind of the IGFs and the MAGs role to reinforce our own mandate and the WISIS, the mandate WISIS gave us to reinforce and, and to defend the multi stakeholder model. So, I mean, I appreciate the suggestions. I do believe that a lot, um, a lot of the all together, our and collective and common might go in the same direction. But again, um, we're also talking about reinforcing our own mandate and the mandate that, I mean, it's still up for renewal. So um, I do think that this is this is maybe the added value in bringing multi stakeholder into the overarching theme. Thank you, Octavia.
Paste. Okay. Schedule is short. Shall I talk on behalf of Chris? No, we hear you, Akali. Oh, ahead. no, I was, um, I, I didn't have my hand raised. I think it was just from last time. Uh, so sorry about that. Oh, I did. So I'm not sure if I'm next in queue. Is it my turn? Justin. Um, thanks. Yeah, no, I just uh, uh, reflecting on the conversation here. I, I, I mean, I think we're, we're settling around building and digital futures, which I think are good. Those are action oriented and, and geared towards the future, which is positive. I, I, you know, there's been a lot of conversation about the need to be inclusive uh, in this process. And I think that there's a way to reflect that. I, I'll take on board, I mean, personally, I would prefer to have multi-stakeholder in here. Um, I'm wondering if there's a possibility of, you know, modifying this a bit to say something like building, I prefer our digital future, building our digital future with all stakeholders uh, as a um, an option that kind of puts together a lot of different eyes here. Um, when we use stakeholders, it depends on what you're talking about. Everybody is not always a stakeholder. So the, there's a difference. And I'm not saying don't use multi-stakeholder. I just want to point out that there's a difference between all and a stakeholder. And not only that, when you have stakeholders, and the, I suppose this is more from a, a project management or even a marketing view. I have many stakeholders, but not all stakeholders are equal. Whereas if I use the term all, I'm assuming all everybody and everybody are equal. That's just a comment with regards to Justin. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's a little bit in the change from for, for all. I get that's for everybody, but I, I I suggested building digital futures with all stakeholders, and I think there is an oh, implication okay. that all. Sorry. in that context, Sorry. Okay. You, you are referring to stakeholders, and you would need all. Okay. Thanks. Are you suggesting we change multi-stakeholder to all stakeholders? Well, I as I said, I prefer multi-stakeholder, but just trying to put options up on the board for discussion. Another way to, I think, getting at what many of us are trying to say is building, again, I like our digital future, but building our digital future with all stakeholders. Thank you. And Chris? Yes. Okay, good. There you go. Hi. Uh, I feel like we're dancing around something when actually if we say all stakeholders and I appreciate Justin's efforts there, but I mean, looking at the chat and looking at and the discussion with you, Carol, I think, you know, we still make our way into some very, you know, ambiguous waters, let's say. Um, so I, and, and I think, you know, multi-stakeholder has a history. It has a, a sort of weight and it has, you know, <laughs> Two decades of arguments and discussions behind it and and in that sense it, it is you know a more difficult word to use but it's also a really important word to use i think that's i i'm i i would prefer we not be trying to sort of equate to multi-stakeholder without saying multi-stakeholder because it, it's important to use that word and to own that word on behalf of the igf and on behalf of this process so, I mean, I think we can, I, there are ways to build that into some of the options that we have here, um, one to five. But I think using that word very deliberately and very sort of uh, intentionally is is important in this context. And I, I sorry, just one one last point. I think uh, I, I was very interested to hear um, the, the points from Kusai and Kusai, it's very good to see you again. Sorry not to be there. Um, but I think it, it is something that has we can accept and we can say this is how we've been working. 
but at this moment I, I don't think we can take for granted that it will be sort of the the way going forward I, I hope it will be and I think we're working to ensure it will be but it we going into the WISIS review need to be fighting for it and I think part of that is being very proud and using the term and owning the term and bringing people in with that term thanks Uh, so, thank you, thank you very much. I mean, I, I listened to your uh, voice, and uh, I'm quite, yani, on the other side, yani, I don't want to be harsh on the technical uh, team that we have. And I think it's all back to the question of Carol that has, she asked this morning. Is it the term or the value behind the term? And I think when, when, when the technical committee looked to it uh, from pure angle, they find that if you look to the value of the term uh, and just simplify it as much as we can, that's ha that that will, will enable us uh, to get more on data. Uh, I heard all the comments, and I'm glad that I originally I asked for, for time till tomorrow morning. So this will give me some time to come back to the uh, to the technical uh, committee with all the discussion that that I heard with the all options, uh, even with Justin uh, put as 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 a middle ground, and and again um, at the end of the day this is this is the this is a pure thinking of uh, the 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 theme, and uh, it, it is the, it's not underestimation or or uh, of the multi stakeholder role. The question is, shall we have it as a term? And it's easy to understand, easy to attract people, easy to to generate more and more uh, of uh, attraction uh, to the event on 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 local and regional regional level. Uh, uh, I heard you very clearly, and I'm uh, I'll I'll take this back to the technical community, uh, and uh, by tomorrow morning I will uh, uh, come back with their their feedback, and I'll try to push yeah, and as much as I can with the direction that I hear from a lot of people in this event. So thank you very much for that. Okay, we're going to give everybody's mind and bodies a little break, a uh, 10 minute break, and we're back. Oh, sorry, Alyssa, go ahead. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. Yeah, um, sorry, just a, a small clarifying question. Um, could you explain what you mean with our technical community or my technical community? Because obviously, in the MAG, we also have a technical community, and just to to be clear that what you mean on it, thanks. We have we have the people who are expert with the IGF process. They've been participating in IGF for, for a long period, and they provide uh, for the secretary, for Saudi secretary, uh, support on technical matters. So if there is any technical uh, advisory, uh, we, we will take, give it back to them, and they are the people who are familiar with the WSS process, IGF process. So this is this is their feedback. And it's similar to the Japan community, uh, technical community that that was supporting Japan last year. But it, but it's a it's a Saudi. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, mine is just a brief comment. Um, I do also support colleagues on uh, on the word, including the word multi-stakeholder. But um, I I also consider the last one uh, building digital future for all together. We also have a multi-stakeholder as a sub team, right? If we agree finally, um, maybe that concept can be included in the 
uh, in the sub team, we still have a chance. Thank you. Response to Prona comments on the chat. Uh, it, it is not. It's not like we say our our local team or local technical is more important. Uh, but uh, we've been as seeking their advice as security as Saudi security, and we share it with open. Uh, uh, يعني, uh, as open as we do in in every time. So this is just suggestions from from uh, uh, host country to the Mac as per the process that's happening every year with every country. So I, I just want to make it clear that we ask asking for advice and, and opinion uh, for your, for the MAG, for the consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's take that break. Back at, Back at five past the hour. Ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Ten minutes.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I trust we had a good tea break and um, we can now continue. Okay, welcome back everybody. So, um, we will continue the discussion on the theme and the sub-themes in the morning. I just want you to think about the list that we have, both of them, and see how they resonate with your community, um, whether or not that is something that they can um, adopt and stand behind as a message. So we really want to come out with messages this year. Um, ones that are relevant, especially relevant to your um, stakeholder group. Each stakeholder group, and we have to remember that even though um, we're multi-stakeholder, each individual stakeholder has their own objective. And of course, every stakeholder thinks their objective is more important than the other, which is fine because that means you're representing your community. So um, just keep in, I want you to look at it in a little bit more of a closed in view. Can my community um, grab a hold of this? No, it doesn't make any sense. Yes, it makes sense. So these are the things I want you to think about um, tonight as you ponder for tomorrow's um, meeting. So we're gonna move ahead with our last uh, agenda item. Um, and we're gonna look at the types of sessions. We're gonna look at how many sessions we want to, to have. Uh, so we're gonna start off with a little presentation from, um, from Celine. And she's going to show us the list of session types we had um, previously. Then she is going to give us just a little mock-up, an idea of um, how many um, sessions we can have. And we listened to the community. Some of them said it started too early. Um, so we're looking at a 9.30 start with a six o'clock finish. Also from the community, well, not from the community, the persons with the booth, they said that, you know, they don't have enough time in the morning. People are just rushing to get into sessions. So that will also give the booth people some time in the morning to showcase their their um their businesses and wares. So Celine, we'll oh sorry, um with the mock-up that Celine is going to show, you're gonna end up with uh, approximately 225 sessions and 85 lightning talks. Your workshop sessions are either 60 to 90 minutes. And your lightning talks about 30 minutes. Uh, Celine? Thank you very much, Carol. Um, so I shared the link uh, for those attending, uh, attending online also in the chat. Um, this is what I'm sharing now on my screen. So basically, this is the list um, of workshop, uh, not workshop, session types that we had in um, 2023. You can see workshops with a short explanation, the open forums, the town halls, launches and awards, lightning talks, networking sessions. We also included here the dynamic coalition sessions, the NRI uh, collaborative sessions, the pre-events. So those are the events that are taking place on day zero. Um, then um, what Carol has mentioned just before um, regarding the, I'm quickly gonna share something new on my screen. Um, we very quickly did a broad overview of um, a schedule, weekly schedule that could accommodate um, max up to 225 sessions at the IGF with the session starting at 9.30 instead of 8.30 like um, in Kyoto, ending at six instead of seven. Um, 
we would not take the sessions in the plenary hall into consideration just because those are, you know, opening and um, closing ceremonies, main sessions, high level sessions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, always with a one hour lunch break. And you can see that per workshop room, for your information, it was always 10 plus one. Uh, so 10 workshop rooms plus one additional one where um, uh, lightning talks could take place. You would have here just, in order to calculate, um, three sessions up to 90 minutes per room to uh, up to 60 minutes. Of course, it's all about uh, shifting the sessions a little bit around that would allow perhaps um, an additional 90 minute sessions uh, versus um, three additional 60 minute sessions, et cetera, et cetera, if we play play around. So as Carol mentioned, that would allow, uh, again, not taking the plenary, uh, plenary hall sessions into consideration up to 225 sessions plus uh, in this 11th room dedicated for um, lightning talks so really just 30 minutes to 20 minutes um, sessions those one um, 225 plus 85 lightning talks so um, i hope that that was clear um, i remain at your disposal should you have any questions thank you Okay, so the discussion starts on um, session types. Uh, Selena, I don't know if you want to um, display the page with the types so people can understand, because we do have some, um, we have new MAG members, they may not um, grasp the difference between them. Um, so workshops are those sessions that the MAG members will be um, evaluating. Open forums were uh, dedicated to uh, governments as it was an initiative to attract more governments, but also, as you can see, treaty-based international organizations. So UN organizations or, or also uh, specialized agencies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, town halls, uh, that was the main criticism also from, from last year, that town halls and uh, open forums were pretty similar. Uh, the distinction was not so clear for, for many of uh, the people who submitted um, sessions and also that town halls allowed for some um, uh, workshop submissions that, they, that weren't taken to also uh, be a town hall instead of a workshop that's been rejected, even though, just for information, uh, both had the same deadline. Um, launches and awards is um, for any kind of stakeholder who would like to present anything um, uh, related to internet governance, let it be a research, um, uh, an, an award or a launch of a, um, of a book or, or whatsoever. Perhaps not, yeah, whatever. The lightning talks were supposed to be um, very quick and short uh, talks. So those were 20 minutes to 30 minutes. People could could choose. And um, this was, for example, a presentation of uh, the latest research work of students, for example, or the launch like of a book or whatsoever. Could do the same thing if you can't uh, networking, networking sessions, it, it says it all. Um, a dedicated space for, um, for uh, stakeholders to come together uh, for networking purposes. Dynamic coalition sessions, um, those were sessions that were de dedicated to the IGF uh, dynamic coalitions. Um, the same goes for the NRIs. Uh, perhaps later, if you have questions regarding these uh, types of uh, types of sessions, um, Anya can give a bit of an overview. Um, Pre-events, those are all sessions that would take place on the 15th of December. So they are not officially part of the program, but um, allows um, a lot of uh, community members to organize sessions prior uh, to the opening. So that would be it. Thank you. So discussion on types, what do we keep? What do we merge? Um, what do we not keep? So floor is open. Chris, 
than talent. Oh, hello, sorry, my video will come in in a second. Um, Celine, thank you very much for that. I, I think that's a really useful overview to begin this discussion with. And I just wanted to run through my reactions um, to each of these. I think workshops is straightforward. Um, happy to keep that. Open forums, I think, are important and good to have there. I would perhaps, because I think there's been, we've, we've entered some ambiguity there, I would perhaps say limit that to governments and treaty organisations um, and let other global organisations come via the workshop proposal route. Um, launches and awards, I, I would tend to say work that into the workshop proposal route as well, because I think even if you're doing it as a launch and award, you still want to make it very sort of, you know, valuable and worthwhile to people attending. So, I mean, but there could be like a tick box in the form to say this is a launch and award and that can be taken into consideration. Um, lightning talks, I think we keep separate as because that, that is different um, and we'll have different um, uh, criteria under which they're judged. I think it would be good to have the MAG have some more visibility on lightning talks than we've had in the past. Um, whether that's a sort of formal selection process or not, I'm open to others, others' thoughts on that. Um, networking sessions, if I'm understanding correctly, are outside the agenda, so wouldn't actually be taking up sort of rooms and slots in the way that others would be. If, if that's the case, I think that's fine, um, because I think the main concern of the MAG should be um, using those slots. They are part of the agenda. Okay, well then... They say, yeah, okay, then I think they should go through the workshop proposal process as well. Um, now, I guess somewhat controversially, I'm saying dynamic coalition sessions and NRI sessions should also go through that workshop proposal um, process. I think there should be tick boxes to say this is on behalf of a, D a DC or on behalf of an NRI, and that should be taken into consideration because I think as MAG, we do want to highlight that intersessional work and that the IGF ecosystem. But I, I also think that these are not slots that should be given out without some justification. I think you know, dynamic coalitions that have done substantive work during the year should absolutely have a space to present and discuss that, um, but they need to make that case. And I think it, it makes sense that they make that case to the MAG. Um, and then day zero events, I'm always a little fuzzy on how that's gone in the past, I'm going to stop and, and leave the day zero events out of my um, rant at this point. So thanks. That's just my perspective and all views and hoping kicks off discussion. Alyssa, then, oh, sorry, Talon, Alyssa, Bruna, lead up. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Palan Sultanov, uh, MAG member. I hope my video will come up too, uh, but my comment is brief. Uh, I was wondering um, to decide uh, which sessions to keep or um, to merge. It would be interesting to see analysis on how in the previous IGFs, what was the attendance? So in, in my experience, uh, for some of the sessions, sometimes there will be more speakers than uh, uh, attendees. And oftentimes the attendees were more like cheerleaders for the speakers, uh, but uh, not really people interested in uh, in the topic itself. Uh, so I think uh, that kind of information would be really useful. And the second uh, thought I had, I don't know if it, it is at all possible, the sessions that are not selected by the MAC, um, perhaps um, they still could, there could be a way for my members to uh, share some of the opinions about uh, propose, uh, people proposing sessions, uh, if they have any, let's say, comments or feedback related to these, uh, the people who are trying to present or about uh, these organizations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alyssa? Um, yeah, so um, I agree that, that we should, should ease um, the way the program is uh, is, is scheduled. Um, and I've also mentioned it before, I, uh, I'm i fully uh, uh, agreeing that the town halls should be merged into, uh, into the workshops. 
um, so my suggestion would be to to um, let go of town halls. And um, with regards to networking sessions, when I was looking back at um, different proposals of the Kyoto uh, meeting, I saw that a lot of networking sessions were also, at least judging um, the proposal, it, it, it had a lot of similarities with workshops. Also with uh, quite a few speakers, um, 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 and they were trying to showcase something or bring together a community, and that that also quite often happens in a, in a workshop. Um, so I, I think that is a type of session that could also be 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 merged into the workshop um, session. Um, yeah, I'll leave it with that for now. Thanks. Um, we cannot, couldn't hear you, but I assume it was me, Carol. Um, your microphone was muted somehow. But yeah, about the session format, um, I would perhaps um take, yeah. So open forums, I think we should keep the way it is. It's really relevant to have a more kind of lightweight process for the approval of this type of sessions, and they have proved to be valuable um throughout history and and in recent editions as well. Um. I don't know as for launches, awards, and networking. Um, I do believe that they might be interesting sorts of sessions to keep some level of flexibility. But if we're keeping the flexibility, then my suggestion would be for us to cut down the numbers or then perhaps um, submit them through the batch that the MAG often analyzes um, on the year. And the same for Lightning Talk. I would, um, just like Chris hinted, I would bring Lightning Talk into the workshop selection process as well because and, and not because we want to be controlling of everything but also because i think that um the mag process is it's more or less what keeps us um somehow connected to the sub themes for the year right so when this is somehow selected um from an outside kind of process we either get what elisa was saying the repetition or the duplication of spaces and things like that so that's um another of my comments i just wanted to echo one comment from Tracy in the chat as well. That's also about us giving attendees enough time to go to the village and also do some like in-person networking for the event as well. And the main issue when we occupy the agenda with over 200 sessions is that people won't really have time to like eat or do anything else and they will do it somehow, but perhaps like somewhere else. Um, and we also need to be cognizant that there is a lot of like satellite events that go on around the IGF. So keeping some level of flexibility on the agenda in that sense would allow for people to go back and, and come go to the other events and come back to the IGF in the general way. And my last point is about this season in Arise. Um, I would perhaps keep a closed and agreed number with the MAG um, for these types of sessions. Um, and this is my suggestion is not because I'm against um, these sessions, but because last year we did have both groups advocating for more slots in the in the agenda. Um, and I mean, more slots in a way that was not very proportional. So we had already the DC session. I think it was the DC sessions. We had already a, a previous subset of sessions that was agreed. It was around 20 something. And then they also asked for a plenary for the DCs that occupied a space that could have been um, a plenary for one of the one of the main sessions for the IGF instead. So it's I, I guess I'm just trying to anticipate some of the issues we might have session. later in the year. So um, together with this discussion, if we can also um, start more or less a debate on how many main sessions we aim to have this year as well, that would be kind of useful to avoid any sort of disagreements or confusion later in the year. So thanks, Carol. Thanks, Bruna. Lito? Thank you, Lito Ibarra, uh, MAG member. I, I may be adding some elements to the confusion, if I may, uh, for the proponents, because I would like to refer to the different formats of the workshop. There are at least six formats, breakout group discussions, birds of a feather, debate, panel format, roundtable discussion, and tutorial. Then, uh, and I don't know if we need all of them within the workshops. I'm not referring to the 
to the classification that uh, has been discussed. But if uh, at some point we're going to get to these formats, because in all, overall, these six types of formats of uh, workshops, plus the other sessions, general sessions, I, I think there are too many types of, uh, of formats of the sessions. Thank you. So, uh, actually, not sure of that, but I think uh, workshops really attractive for the participants, and we should uh, maximize the number of workshops. Uh, maybe ninety minutes a limit, but sometimes seventy five is as good as ninety. But uh, I heard that it is very selective. I hope more participants could be engaged. So I hope to increase the uh, number of workshops, no matter to merge or something, shorten the time or something like that. That I'm not sure, but it's uh, from some suggestions and my observation. Thank you. Marcus, Catherine, Manny. Thank you, Carol. Marcus Kummer speaking in my capacity as a co facilitator of the Dynamic Coalitions Coordination Group. We held uh, several calls on this issue. The Dynamic Coalitions are fairly uh, aware that there is a general call for reducing the overall number of sessions, and they realize it may not be realistic that each Dynamic Coalition will have their own session in the future and they, uh, however, they recall that they consider themselves a key component in the IGF ecosystem and they really would like to be have a better integration in the overall program. Uh, one way of achieving this could be a better thematic integration, that is that dynamic coalitions would contribute to relevant main sessions they could also be given a slot in the relevant main session where they produce their findings. Thus, it would not be necessary for them to hold their individual main session. One idea that was floated was also that uh, several DCs could team together to have a session on a team that, that is common to them. And they also would like to maintain, as they have had since, uh, I think it was 2016 or 15, to have their main session. But they would like to hold it differently and based on the taking stock from last year's main session where they uh, present their findings in a main session. Now, it is clear, and I think also Chris alluded to that, that not every dynamic coalition has finished their work every year or has something to present. So we would really like to focus on those dynamic coalitions who have something, an outcome to present. And having said that, uh, all the dynamic coalitions would like to continue to have a slot where they could meet, but that could be outside the main program, could be kind of a bilateral meeting room, where they have the opportunity to f physically get together as the annual IGF is <clears throat> the only possibility for them to have an annual meeting. So these are various ideas that have been uh, floated. Uh, and I suppose we will have the opportunity to get back together uh, to this and discuss it in more details. Thank you. Catherine, many. Did you um, take your hand down? Yeah. Did you take your hand down? Okay, many. Thank you. Um, my name is Cecilia Lumac, member. Uh, I, I was just curious. I think maybe it's it's just me being a first year monk member and not understanding this. So so um, are we talking about sessions um, like dynamic collisions and arise going into the same going through the same process and and selection criteria as we do with workshops? Because um, I think going into this, let's say, scrutiny and um, putting 
all sessions under the same uh, process might might um, bring issues. For example, uh, we have an NRI uh, session proposal that um, and by by nature uh, targets a specific regional issue. And by by what I mean by that, we will eventually also reflect this in the panel and, and henceforth it will not tick the box of the diversity. So um, it will be uh, automatically out. So uh, just wanted to, to ask if, if we consider a process for those, would they have to match the same criteria? And if not, I think that it, that it would not be maybe the best approach. So yeah, and, and otherwise just uh, another point, which I also think that we've heard in, in uh, previous taking stock exercises uh, and, and this one as well. Um, it's important, I think that we align, uh, make an effort with strengthen our efforts to align other sessions, uh, NRIs, dynamic collisions, et cetera, with the thematic tracks that we will be eventually choosing for, for the IGF. So those two points, thank you. Drew? Hi. Uh, yeah, just uh, reflecting on uh, the discussion about reducing the number of formats. Um, when, I, when I sort of consider the meeting in Kyoto, I maybe went to, I don't know, possibly 30 sessions through throughout the week, uh, including day zero, there was very little differentiation between the sessions I went into. They all Look, I mean, maybe the the ones in the in the main plenary room felt a bit different, but other than that, the, the, all of the other workshop rooms were almost entirely panel sessions or round tables. I think, and that was pretty much it. So I'm not sure that the the, the different labels made a lot of difference to what was actually delivered in Kyoto. Um, they all felt very similar. Um, to, to be honest, so uh, which is a long winded way, I think, of agreeing with the, the comments Chris made earlier on that yeah, I think it would it makes a lot of sense to significantly reduce uh, the number of labels because the reality is that there's a lot less differentiation anyway um, when it comes to the delivery of the uh, sessions. Thank you. So um, let's look at some implications we had where we wanted to merge um, some of the formats into the workshop. And then we just heard that um, even though you had these different formats at the end of the day, they all looked like a workshop. The implication of trying to channel a lot of these things into workshop, it means more work for the mag. Now, I'm going to give an example as Carol on the mag previously. Um, you have over 300, maybe felt like <laughs> um, overall workshops to look at. You ended up with about 100, depending on what category you fell in. And you had about 10 people in your group and three, per three persons submitted. So now if we're looking to add more to the workshops, in terms of looking at pro proposals. So if we, for example, make um, launch an awards into a workshop type thing. So we're adding numbers. Um, who else? I think DCs into workshops, you're adding more numbers. So that's the implication. Is there a solution? Thank you. Yes, I, I am very well aware of this implication, but I do think that um, by having the MAG judging a, a larger group or, or a larger section of um, the the proposals um, would, would prevent as much overlap between the different sessions that there has been um, 
at the at the Kyoto meeting. Um, in the chat, I, I made a proposal um, to trim down um, the, the the different types of sessions, and um, instead of having um, explaining with a workshop, if you want to have a round table, a panel session, etc., just ask the the requested time. Um, um, as you could see in my suggestion, I also uh, cut back um, or cut out of it the lightning talks because that's basically a 30 minute session. Um, so if someone would request a 30 minute session, it would basically be, be a lightning talk. Um, I think we could make it much more easy for people to understand what they're going going to go to instead of having all these different types of sessions. If you go to any other kind of meeting, you don't have... Um, 10 different session types that you can choose out of. You just go to whatever's in the schedule and uh, that's that's a meeting on a topic. So, thanks. Anybody wants to put a proposal on the on the floor? I mean, mm -hmm. I'm hearing it's quite clear that nobody's supporting town halls as a separate. I mean, that's one quick decision we can make, right? Um, no more town halls. on the floor was whether or not you want to put the, um, I think it was the launch and awards into workshops. That was next on the agenda. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my understanding of launch and awards is that they, correct me if I'm wrong, but they happen at lunchtime and after, our, oh, during as well? Okay, then that's fine. Okay, so um, launch and awards on the floor. Um, we move them to workshops. Many. Um, going to my the point that I made earlier about the NRIs. Um, again, for the launch and awards, there's the same part of the form that says um, to select uh, what type of policy question this session answers. So, um, would that mean that? A launch and awards session will do that, or we will remove it from the form. No, I mean for a launch and award, then um, we have to have a completely different um, thing because it's not a discussion as such. If they're launching a book, they are um, giving out awards, so it's it's a to it's totally different form than a workshop. Yeah. So basically, we're just saying that the mag evaluates them. Either that, or reduce the number. Um, yeah, I think there is value in people launching um, things at the IGF, and um, I'm not too sure about the award section, but the launch section, yes, definitely. So, but um, we can give it to the MAG just as we've been saying that um, we should.